It's pretty easy to access it, but just these struts are here in the way. Spacewalkers Prokopiev and Patelin on your screen now. You can see the spacesuit with the blue stripes. That's our EV2, Dmitry Patelin. And going sort of behind to the left side of the Poisk airlock, you have Prokopiev, our EV1, in the spacesuit with the red stripes. They're configuring their tethers right now to get on the move to move from the Poisk airlock over to their first work site of the day, the Rossviet module. So while we're waiting for our live views to come back, let's take a look at the work sites that they'll be working at today. As I mentioned, they came out of the Poisk airlock. They'll be moving over to the Rasviet module, which you can see in the gray words on the left. And then you see the European robotic arm there, ERA. It's going to move the airlock. You can see it highlighted in red. Now, the Nauka airlock, going to move it over to the right side, the Nauka module. And these are the work sites that we're going to be using today. Okay, so shall we continue the translation? Yes. Let's keep moving. We have just patchy calm right now, so we are not getting video. Okay, we're translating along the strela. Repeat your last. Did you turn off your headlight? I think one is on. What about me? I have one left. No, two on both sides. No, those are my Orlan ones. That's what I'm talking about. While we're waiting to get our live views back, you may hear the two female voices. Those are actually Russian to English translators that you're hearing. Uh, those are the voices of the spacewalkers as they're communicating between themselves and with this view that you see here, Mission Control Moscow. They're talking to the folks there on the ground. It sounds like they're beginning to make their move uh, via the Strela 2 boom over the Rossviet module. And you can see the spacewalkers at the bottom of the screen using the Strela boom to assist as they move over to their work site. So I pretty much reached the end of it, and where do we translate over? Uh, past the black rings. Okay, past the black rings. Okay. 
And here we are with those helmet camera views. You can see the number 16 burned into the lower right side of the video. That means you're looking from the point of view of Sergei Prokopiev. Tethering to the GSM Delam. Tethered. Sergey, can you copy me? Yes, absolutely. I hear you loud and clear. What about us? Uh, now it's better. There was a lot of noise. I want to remind you that on the pressure adapter, there's a fish hook. You are next to it. Now it's under your right foot, Dmitry. Yes, I see it. Just remember that you cannot tether to it. Okay. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, so I'm leaving. Can you take a look? Does it look good? Yes. Yes, like this and a little bit further. Maybe that's a you can see our two spacewalkers in this overall view on the Strela boom, making their way to the work site. You may hear the word translate. Where do we translate to? Uh, where are they going? This means uh, the path that they're going to take to best configure their tethers so they don't get tangled. And the ground is also giving them some warnings of what they should not be attaching their tethers to. Sometimes there's some sensitive hardware outside of the International Space Station. Uh, they're making their way over to the Rosviet module. Once they get there, they're going to demate some cables, remove an MLI cover, which is a protective thermal blanket around the airlock, um, remove some protective covers, undo some launch locks, and then we'll get the ERA involved, the European robotic arm, so that Andrei Fajayev inside of the International Space Station can begin to move it over to the Nauka module. In the meantime, they're still making their way over to Rosviet before they can begin these tasks. It's a bit problematic here. Yeah, honestly, I don't see a path. Artyom, do you have some recommendations? Maybe go on the right? On my right? Maybe go on the opposite side. Go to MRM. And then you want to go the way that you translated last time, during the last DVA? Yes. I understand about the fish hook, but I don't see where else. Since I can't hold on to the fish hook, I have to jump over to that other side. Okay, copy. Let's try the way you did it last time. Okay. Let's go in that direction then. In any case, stick together. Translate together. Okay. Yes, let's stick together. So we're going to MRM? Yes. And you've tethered the this too? Yes, we have. Okay. All right, I am translating behind the Strela, and I'm holding to the handrails, cargo handrails. So I was smart going underneath the Strela. I think you're fine.
так. Я вышел на них первый. All right. Now I'm out. And uh, I am hooking to the circular handrails. Yes, and the second valve should be next to it, should be nearby. All right, I'm activating it on this side. I'm just trying to squeeze by. And I have hooked myself to the handrail. With something. Yes, sir. So we want to make sure that you have the tether and then watch your foot. And I can feel it. Could you please go back and assist? Yes, sir. I'm going to look. I'm going to see how we've hooked. I have hooked. I can actually remove that tether. You'll just need to untangle it. And it's just, it's behind your back, so it's not a very convenient move. Just wait. Let me help. Yes, so we are good on the time, so don't be in a hurry. We copy. Just untangling it like that. Do you have it on your side now? We're seeing a wide view of the Russian segment of the International Space Station now. Our spacewalkers in the center left of your screen. Behind your backpack. Okay, now we're good. Are you done? Yes, hold it. Yes, I'm holding it. Uh, this tether is for securing Strela. Yes. There is one. I believe it's the second one, right? Okay. Then I am going to translate using circular handrails along MRM-1. Okay. Uh, there was a lanyard somewhere. I didn't Need, I would like to reach it. I think this is the one. Uh, 
Так, как соревнования. Yes, I need to secure myself by this linear, and now I actually uh, put it back. I'm running around HPP2. So, as agreed, you'll go to number 29, and Dima will approach you later. Okay, copy. Are you managing? I suggest you go up above, above your head, and then that will take you immediately to half a bed to two panels. Okay. Okay. I positioned myself uh, next to the panel 29. Okay, copy, Sergey. Sergey, uh, can you uh, take a look at the latches and the adapter? Yes, I can actually go down a little bit. Please do. All right, while Dima is still translating. Yes. Let's take a look. See, make sure that all the uh, retainers are locked. Okay.
Okay. I am next to the adapter, retainer lock. If you can see the TV signal, yes, uh, we can see the handle is closed, uh, the tab is down, and also the adapter is sit sits tight. Exactly. And now I need to check the bolts. Yes. Yes, make sure that they have not moved since the last EVA and that the lock wiring is in place. We're starting to get views of the airlock. That's that bulbous item that you see in front of you. The first steps of the day are to demate some cables on that airlock, remove thermal covers, uh, remove some other protective coverings that it has, and remove its launch locks before it can be moved um, by the European robotic arm. On operations with the connectors, we need to wait for just a little bit. Okay. And also, uh, the wing uh, locks are tightened. It was done manually, but they sit in place. Okay. All right, go back to panel number 29, and we'll stand by for a little bit. We need to get a go to work with the connectors. All right, I'm translating back. Well, now let's describe what I see here. The cable is secured it's with a wire tie. It, it's attached to the strut, or rather the lever that will be removed, and that's number one. And then goes, there are two Lyrka um, lock pins, yes, and then you should see the dummy. Yes, I see one dummy. I believe that uh, Sergei will need to rotate, and probably you'll have to translate to dummy. No. Go ahead and secure the lock to the lever, and then uh, Lirka is next, and one more wire tie on uh, handrail 150. And what do you think? Do we need to remove all of it? Well, we will figure it out in a minute. Now, show me where do I need to mate it to? You, you mean where I should be connected? Well, here is the panel, yes. Yes, you will have to free the entire length, you're right. All right, then. Those wire uh, ties will go to our common bundle. Uh, no. Uh, the way it works, they're actually wrapped around the handrail and secured there. You're getting a great look at the airlock that we're going to be working with so much during the spacewalk today. That's the, the white object on the left side of the screen. If we pan over to the left a little bit more, you'll kind of see its spherical end. That is the airlock that we're going to be moving over to the Naoko module today. First task, they're going to be demating cables between Rasviet and the experiment airlock, that white thing that you're seeing there on your screen. When you unplug something, the end that you just unplugged is loose, and you can't have loose cables floating around while the experiment airlock is being moved. So they're going to plug those loose ends into the panel onto the airlock itself just to stow them away. are still waiting because the command is still in progress. It didn't go through yet. All right, but I can release the wire ties from the cable. Our spacewalkers are going over their game plan right now. No. Uh, be very careful. Try not to touch the cover. Try not to grab onto it. Which one are you talking about? Oh, you're talking about the lock uh, cover, yes. Uh, try to make sure you're holding uh, the rails only, handrails only.
Okay, this is secured. Uh, uh, yes, one is. All right, I am taking the lock pin. Copy. All right. I removed it and uh, I'm throwing it into a trash bag. Okay, you are going to proceed working with the connectors. Reminder, first we demate to one on panel number two, and then a two-dash two on panel F2. Copy two one and then two two. Yes, uh, after the, you disconnect to one, you'll hand it over to Sergey. Understood? Two one. Okay, I want to make sure I want to mix it up. Actually, we can ha even see the arrows. A moment ago, you saw a view of the control panels. Essentially, the electrical sockets where they're going to be unplugging these cables. They're going to do so one at a time and then hand it off to the next spacewalker. They have a series of six that they need to demate. Do we need to uh, cover the connector here? Uh, is it uh, wire tied already? Yes, it is secured. All right, then you go to cover it. Very good. In work.
I'm ready to receive it. I'm holding it. Uh, uh, do you need some length here? Let me try. Yes. You will be made in 2910, but only after 22 will be disconnected. So should I just leave this connector alone? Yes. For now, yes. You need to stand by for now. Okay. Ah, it's getting hot on, on the sun. All right, the sun set in 20 minutes. All right, uh, Sergey uh, actually released all the links uh, he could get. I see. You're getting a view now of the plugs that they're working to demate from from the module that they're working with. They're unplugging the equipment airlock, the experiment airlock from the Rossviet module. Uh, they need to unplug them so that the experiment airlock can move freely with the European robotic arm. This is a task expected to take about 15 minutes. Uh, they're working diligently. Uh, the voices that you're here are interpreters speaking on behalf of the of the spacewalkers, but also the voice of mission control. Okay. You can hear them working uh, together to make sure that they're unplugging the correct things, uh, handing them to their fellow spacewalkers, and getting the task done. Talk. Um. After this task, they'll move on to remove some protective covering from the experiment airlock. This includes multi-layer insulation cover from the end of the airlock and some other protective covers that protects it from the environment of space. And then we'll deal with the caps. Okay, understood. All right. Then I'm the maiden in half a pay to dash two. Go ahead. Am I doing it right? Yes, yes, go ahead and disconnect. Uh, two two is demated. Copy. All right. Unintelligible. No. If the cable has a slack, that could be uh, an, obs an obstruction t to releasing. Uh, the connector, you need to move it. Well, now you are go to meet to one to two ten to twenty nine ten. Copy two one to twenty nine ten. While we're getting these helmet camera views, we're seeing not only the plugs that they're working with to demate from the experiment airlock, but we're also getting some views of the Earth down below. Uh, the International Space Station is flying over the South Pacific Ocean right now. It's a bit strange. I cannot really secure it in fully on that cap. What about the tap? Uh, the uh, lock is open. I am trying to secure it. And actually, the position seems to be locked, but it doesn't really help. It looks like the lock doesn't hold it properly. 
All right, let's try it one more time. If you feel like it's still not copyright, and then go ahead and secure it on site. Like we were talking about earlier, uh, just because you unplugged it doesn't mean it can stay that way. When the European robotic arm moves this experiment airlock, the wires can't be floating all around in the vacuum of space, so they're securing them to the airlock itself, sometimes plugging it into a dummy panel in order to get them out of the way. 29-9. 29-9, proceed with demating in work. Copy. And you will remate it to the adjacent dummy. Okay. Our spacewalkers well underway on this task, having demated the majority of the cables that on their to-do list today. But without any force, it will sit tight. Okay. Well. There is like a tiny bar inside the dummy, and that bar uh, has a small um, protrusion uh, onto the outside. It's like a little ball on it. Okay. Can you try to close it one more time? No. What I'm trying to explain is it has some travel, but it would not get off. Uh, in order to take it off, then I'll need to um, apply a serious force. Okay, a retainer is on. Also. Okay, We're now one hour into the six and a half hour planned Russian spacewalk today that began at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the beginning of the spacewalk, of course, beginning when the hatch opened for this Russian EVA. Our spacewalkers, uh, Sergei Prokopiev, our spacewalker with the red stripes, EV-1, and Dmitry Patelin with the space suit with the blue stripes, our EV-2, the 262nd spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades, the fifth spacewalk of 2023 out of the International Space Station, and the third spacewalk for Expedition 69 out of the International Space Station. Well. The spacewalk is well underway. Their first task is just about complete, if not already. They translated or made their way over from the Poisk airlock over to the Rosviet module where the experiment lock lives. It's going to be moved over today to the Rosviet module, uh, but the first task was to DMA all the cables connecting the two. It has to be totally unattached from Rosviet in order for it to move over to the Nyoka module. And that first task of the cables is complete, if not already complete, or almost complete. Next, they're going to move on to removing some thermal insulation covers. You are now covering the half of the connectors. You are correct. Sergey. So, you are going to take the cover and proceed to the target. It's right here. I will collect it anyway when I am translating that way. Well, we're not in a hurry, just in case. Okay, 
First gear. For a moment at the end of the airlock, you saw that orange cover right at the end of the airlock. That's what we're going to be working to remove now in this task. Yes, it's uh, secured very well here with a pretty bow. I think I need a cutter. Or maybe not. I see the moon, and she is a stunner. And you just heard a call that one of the spacewalkers uh, saw the moon and that it was wonderful. Um, you can kind of see it peeking between the Earth and the space station, that tiny dot over there in the distance. You are correct, FFP4. Uh, inaudible from Moscow. Is it overheated? Do I need to turn it off the camera for now? It's already off. But the hacker is on. I am uh, securely located close to half a four connector, removing the cover. Adjustable, da? I'll take my adjustable tether now. Copy. In your view now is a view of that thermal cover right on the end, the orange that they're going to be working to take off. This is their second step in an effort to free the experiment airlock from the Rosviet module. Uh, previously, they demated some cables that connected the two, and now they'll be taking off some insulation layers, protects the experiment airlock from the harsh environment of space. Yes, and this particular gap spanner on the MLI almost broke. Also, you could use uh, your very small tether to secure it to the lug. 
Yes, I could. I could use my red. No, not the, the bigger red, no. You will use it for your bundle later. Okay, here, the cover from half a pair for connector will go here. I figured it out. It's an orange, uh, round, uh, orange uh, cover. Would you like me to take some pictures here of the connectors? You can. Or you can combine it with your photography of the docking assembly. Okay, I'll use the wire tie holder and then use the loop and the gap spanner. And uh, the configuration I'm getting here is almost a square, at least a rectangular. I will secure it to the loop. And you don't have to go through the loop, actually. Oh, it's already secured well enough. Now the target. That's it. It is properly secured. It's not going to do a bunk. So you may be hearing Mission Control Moscow and our spacewalkers talking about MLI. This stands for multi-layer insulation, and it's essentially a blanket that protects it from the harsh environment of space, micrometeoroid, orbital debris, things like that. We're going to want to remove it before we can move the experiment airlock over to Nauka. You can also... Finish up here. And uh, we're getting closer to the eclipse. Copy. Okay, do some inspection here. Copy. We'll do so. It is big. It was not closed. MLI is read up now. I like the color orange. Yes, we remove the MLI cover and try not to touch the docking assembly. Turn on the glisser and do a minute inspection of the mating surfaces. See that there is no pod. I don't see any. The cone is clear. Should be. Okay, 
Okay, I am removing. I see a, a piece of thread, but not on the mating surface. But still, it's there. It says UK4PRM. That's where the thread is. Well, as long as it's not the mating service. So our spacewalkers, Prokopiev and Pratelin, are preparing the experiment airlock for its travel over to the Naoka module. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what this airlock is. Um, so the airlock that they're moving weighs 1,792 pounds. Uh, previously, on April 28th, they had moved over a radiator, very similar task to what they're doing today. That radiator weighs 1,091 pounds. And you can kind of see what they look like and where they'll, where they'll be positioned in this graphic here. Um, the airlock and the radiator that was moved over in a previous spacewalk was launched on the STS-132 mission on the space shuttle Atlantis attached to the Rossviet module where our spacewalkers are right now. That's their workstation. Uh, that launched in May of 2010. And a fun fact, NASA astronaut Steve Bowen was on that mission. He's aboard the International Space Station now but is not participating in the spacewalk today. You're getting kind of a sneak peek into the inside of that experiment airlock now that the multi-layer insulation cover has been removed. We're an hour and 15 minutes into the spacewalk, and it looks like they're well underway on their second task. They're getting that blanket together now. Further away. MLI is um, completely away and released. Again, go over the connectors, please. No fog, no contamination. No, everything is in pristine condition. And uh, record, please, and do photography. As long as we're still in insulation, please uh, take some pictures and do the glisser. And UFP4 also. UFP4 with a for the imagery without any covers. Take a video and pictures. I did already. Maybe I could do some more in the light. Okay, now you may turn on the lighting. And then you get to use your long wire ties that you took such great pains to prepare. The International Space Station just moved into an orbital nighttime. You can hear them talking about turning their cameras on, also using this opportunity to take photos and video of that experiment airlock now that the thermal cover is up is off. They want to use that opportunity to get some great imagery of that. That orange cover that they have in their hands, that MLI cover that was at the very end of the airlock, that's actually part of the jettison bundle. So they're going to be getting rid of that at the end of the day. 
They have five items from today's spacewalk that they'll jettison away from the International Space Station and about five items from previous spacewalks that they want to get rid of as well. This is going to be the last task of the day is jettisoning that bundle away, so they're not quite ready for that yet. But that orange cover that you see there will be jettisoned. Here is the long wire tie. Okay, we secure it now. Okay, pull it out this way. Okay. There are two of them here, correct? There is wire tie made out of two smaller pieces and one wire tie, three of them tied together. And this is what you need? Yes. I take this. I will release the KPU tool carrier for now. And you'll have to wind this uh, around. Will do. At some time, we're going to lose video coverage. Yes, and we'll be doing all the restraining here. Right now, we are following along the EVA timeline. We're just on time. Okay, you will put this on like this. Do I need to pull? Or it's already straightened out? Okay, we well, can secure it later. We don't have to do it right, right now. Okay, I'm holding and you can tie. We're in a momentary handover between our satellite communication. At the moment, we expect to get our video and audio back here very shortly. In the meantime, we've got these views of Mission Control Moscow. This is a view from their balcony, and they're working with our spacewalkers to get them the tasks that they need to do and answer any questions that they might have. Okay, I'm taking the tether. Everything fine here or not? 
Вот только твою погрязали, получается. Let me see. I think we tied it securely. Давай сейчас. Привет. I think it is not going anywhere. We're nearly an hour and a half into the spacewalk today. It began at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern time, opening or beginning when the hatch opened on the Poisk airlock. Uh, we're talking a lot about airlocks here today. So Poisk is the airlock on the Russian segment where the Russian spacewalks begin. That's for people to come out of. It's a room where we bring the room back down to vacuum so that we can open the door, match the pressure of the vacuum of space. However, the task of today is to relocate an experiment airlock. So human beings are never going to come out of that airlock, only experiments. It's very similar to the Kibo module over on the Japanese segment. Last week, we moved a radiator over from the Rossviet module over to Nauka, and now we're going to do the exact same thing with this experiment airlock. I think it's all right. The estimated time for today's spacewalk is about six and a half hours. It looks like our spacewalkers are slightly ahead of schedule as they work on their second task of the day. <laughs> The small cover, or the large cover, which one was here? It's not really well secured here on the loop. Maybe we should do better than this. We'll use the wire tie, secure it to the loop. Okay, I'm twisting the wire right now. Here we go. Now just restrain here. Back with you now with live views. We're getting the point of view of our EV-1 today. In the video, we see the 
Excuse me, we're getting a view from our EV2. This is Dimitri Patelin. He's in the blue suit. We're looking across at our spacewalker in the red suit, Prokopiev. If you need some more time to get the bundle just right, we have some spare time. Okay, or at least a couple minutes extra. This bundle that they're talking about is the group of trash that they're going to be jettisoning off of the International Space Station at the end of the spacewalk. They want to make sure that everything is packed in because they will have some more items to pack in as well before the end of the spacewalk. And then locks three and five. And then we're going to have to talk through it, probably have to work with the airlock locks. And then which plan are we going to do, Sergei? You're going to try to give a push first? I think I will start with one. And Dimitri will be nearby with a pry bar. Yes, let's call it a, a space crowbar. Okay, copy. And then in 15 minutes, we'll have an LOS, seven to eight minutes, not video only, but audio as well. Don't know how many of the operations will get done by that point, but just FYI. Okay, I understand. Then let's begin the trans uh, movement. Are you ready, Dimitri? Yes, I am. I didn't copy that, Artyom. You are continuing to the movement? Yes, you're not supposed to come here, Dimitri. You go to that other side. Well, I'm coming here to the barrier to on the circular handrail. I have positioned myself. There's good access to the lock. Copy. So if you look on the left, okay, be sure to tether an audible. Okay, copy. When you are ready, you are go to proceed, Dimitri. So first, we demate the launch locks and then disengage the locks. Okay, I am in the area of the lock. Okay. I guess I, I should activate the GoPro. Well, it's dark and nothing is happening. So maybe it's too soon. Well, prior to the disengagement. So we're going to dis engage and try to position yourself in a way that it is convenient 
to push at that center lock. Our spacewalkers are over halfway done with their task to disconnect the experiment airlock from the Rossviet module. Um, once that's all set and done, Andrei Fajayev inside the International Space Station will use the ERA, European Robotic Arm, to move the experiment airlock over to the Nauka module. These spacewalkers will get a brief break as they watch the experiment airlock move over, but then they're going to go over to the Nauka module to do an assist as Andrei Fajayev inches it closer and closer for its installment. The airlock because we are beginning the demating process. Okay, copy. I am tethered to MRM-1. Okay, copy. I have tethered the cover and I am removing it. It's also attached by a fish line. Is it possible to rip them? Okay, I'll try. Yes, the fishing line tore off. Okay, copy. I'm removing the cover into the trash bag. Now I tether it again, right, this next element. No, this element remains. You pull it and remove it. So nothing else gets taken off here, correct? Nothing else should be tethered? Inaudible. Okay, I understand. Prokopiev and Pratelin are working on one of the last steps before the airlock can move. Their launch locks that held the experiment airlock and the radiator in place during their launch on the STS-132 shuttle in 2010. They were removed before the radiator was relocated back in April and must be done before this experiment airlock can move as well. So, so far they've disconnected the electrical cables, removed protective blankets, and this is the last step before Andrei Fajayev inside the International Space Station can robotically relocate the experiment airlock to Nauka. Okay. Okay, so then I'm moving to the next one. Lock number three is open. Let's go to lock number five.
Prokopiev and Patelin are working together on this task of removing the launch locks. Our EV2 Patelin is removing two locks. You just heard him call out number three. Uh, we have number five on that side as well. And on the other side of the airlock, uh, Prokopiev is working on another launch lock for a total of three. I am bio lock number five. Performing the same actions. Copy. The, spa the spacewalkers working diligently to remove these launch locks. Uh, they're working a little bit ahead of the timeline. And as soon as this task is complete on the go from Mission Control Moscow, Andrei Fajayev will slightly move the airlock away from the Rossviet module, their work site that they're at right now. And then our spacewalkers will check out the disengagement and make sure that all is well before uh, a full movement over to the now go module out of video for about 15 minutes and down audio for about seven to eight minutes. I understand. And let me just finish. Prior to installation, we have nine minutes in eclipse. So when you get into installation, turn off the helmet lights, and actions for the central log, I propose that we wait until we get video back. When we have a valuable video, then we can begin with the central log. In the meantime, you can work with the rods, okay? The second one came out, and this log is open. Copy. Well, then, and you will have to wait for about 18 minutes, approximately, for the video to go AOS, so you will just have to rest. Okay, we understand. Copy. And here, here's another plan. If we've demated the rods and we're not working with the central lock, Dmitry, maybe you can translate to Sergei? Should we try to remove the rods completely? While the airlock is in place, it's very hard to access them. It's possible, but it's not easy. Yes, then I can translate over to Sergei in the meantime. Okay, copy, but what should he tether to on the side of the docking port? Or maybe I should go over to Dmitry. Maybe by the transportation bracket, 
Yeah, we can translate over onto the bracket. Well, I am on the U.S. segment side now. Okay, I guess I can move to the docking port side. You can go forward and translate down the transportation bracket. Okay. Now we are about to go LOS for audio and video. So once we are back, AOS, I will let you know. Okay, copy. We're standing by. So we've lost our live views and audio with the International Space Station and our spa spacewalkers for the moment. This is a slightly more extended loss of signal than we might be used to, but it was planned and expected. You heard our spacewalkers chatting with Mission Control Moscow about this extended loss of signal. They were making a plan for what they should be doing in the meantime, and it looks like they might be able to do some tasks ahead of time while we're not able to communicate with them. This includes removing some tie rods and some other, closing up some flaps, some other things, some other get-ahead tasks that we would have liked to do while we had signal with them, but they're more than welcome to do on their own. So they might do that. They might take a breather. Spacewalking is very physically taxing. Uh, they have the ability to rest any time that they need to, maybe take some photos of the Earth down below if the opportunity presents itself. We're just over an hour and 45 minutes into the spacewalk, and our spacewalkers are actually ahead of schedule. Uh, they would be getting ready to move the experiment airlock or monitor it because Andrei Fajayev, their cosmonaut colleague, is inside the International Space Station at the controls of the European robotic arm, getting ready to move that over. They don't want to do it quite yet now that we're in this loss of signal, but our spacewalkers are going to do some tasks in the meantime uh, while we're in this loss of signal. So far, they've made great progress. They've demated a series of six cables from both on the side of the airlock and the Rosviet module. They removed some MLI cover, that's the multi-layer insulation that protects the hardware outside of the space station from things like orbital debris, micrometeoroids, stuff like that. And they've also removed some other protective covers on attachment devices. Um, and as we lost signal, they were just finishing up their task of removing the launch locks that were needed uh, when the experiment airlock and the radiator from the last spacewalk back in April uh, as they launched to the space station. Once that experiment airlock is, is under the controls of the European robotic arm, uh, our space cars are going to move over to the Nauka module and perform what's known as a GCA, a ground control assist. It's a bit of a misnomer because we, we usually talk about ground-based operations. We usually mean something done uh, here on planet Earth, but that's not the case this time. Patelin and Prokopiev 
um, in their duties as ground control assist are helping Fijayev fine tune the position of the airlock on the European robotic arm. It's kind of like when you're parallel parking your car. You have all the tools that you need to do it yourself, uh, but it's a little easier when your friends get out and give you a little bit of a better view and help you out. Once everything is just right, perfectly aligned, the experiment airlock will be mated to the Nauka module. If time permits, we'll go ahead and hook it up. You're getting a view of Mission Control Moscow. Also monitoring this operation is Mission Control Houston. Uh, while we're in this momentary loss of signal, there's not a lot we can do. Uh, some folks are taking this opportunity to reset, get everything that they need for the remainder of the spacewalk. We're about an hour and 49 minutes in uh, to our planned six and a half hour spacewalk. Uh, the, here's the view of Mission Control Houston now. You can kind of see people standing up, getting ready to prepare themselves for the rest of the spacewalk. Our spacewalkers are doing the same. Procopiev and Patelin are on a rest period. Spacewalks are very, very physically taxing, and they're taking this opportunity to take a break, um, possibly do some get ahead tasks. The International Space Station is now flying in an orbital nighttime over Kazakhstan, just north of Baikonur, the launch site of Prokopiev and Patelin, our two spacewalkers this evening back in September. Yes, I see you. Yes, we see you as well. Okay, excellent. Copy. Okay, so Dimitri has arrived. And he's on the bracket below the adapter. I don't know how we're going to be removing it. I guess we are under the Strela adapter. So when we get video again well, and we open the lock, Sergei will try to give a push.
So it looks like we're intermittently getting some audio back as we wait to get our video back completely. For now, we're looking at Mission Control in Moscow. Yes, we are standing by for video. In the meantime, some important reminders. Uh, the female voices that you're hearing are actually um, interpreters interpreting what Pokropiev and Patelin say in Russian and translating it into English so that we know what they say. It's the same for Mission Control Moscow that we're looking at, too. The people on console there uh, communicating with our spacewalkers are translated as well. Prokopiev is our EV-1 today. He's our spacewalker in the red suits. And Patelin is in the space in the space suit with the blue suit. He is our EV-2 today. So it should move off of the rod for about 15 to 20 centimeters. Another important distinction to make today is the difference between the two airlocks. We started out in the Poisk airlock, where our spacewalkers Prokopiev and Patelin exited into the vacuum of space in their Orlan spacesuits. But the goal of the spacewalk is actually to move an experiment airlock. Uh, only experiments will exit out into the vacuum of space, never human beings. Okay. It's very similar to the Kibo module. Uh, the Kibo experiment module on the International Space Station has that functionality as well. We're just relocating it today from the uh, Rossviet module over to the Nauka module. It looks good. It's with the Earth in the background. So regarding air ops, there's an update. You'll not need to put in the command. It will be monitored. You just need to monitor the disengagement. Make sure that the airlock disengages. Okay, copy. We are ready on your go. Okay, we are standing by for five more minutes. Okay. Did you turn off the helmet lights? Yes, one is still operating. For me, yes. One is on. Dimitri, the right one. Look, look at how it is right behind you, white call. Yes, we're flying over Lake Baikal.
еще раз. Now, one more time. Before we proceed, let's uh, make sure we know what we do. First of all, turn Gliss around. A second, Sergey, you open the lock, the central lock, and report. After that, on MCC Go, we begin to push the car out of the central lock. Uh, after we uh, push the uh, lock pin from the central lock, report, and report. And then ERA will be uh, turning on the airlock camera. Okay. Uh, ERA operator. Okay, copy. All right, now monitor ERA motion. Unintelligible. Okay. Uh, you are supposed to stay on MRM. Do not uh, step onto the uh, airlock. Copy. We're just over two hours into our plans, into our spacewalk planned for six and a half hours today, uh, coming out of a lengthier loss of signal, but we're going to get our live views back soon. These spacewalkers have been notified that they can begin to remove one of the launch locks, and as soon as that happens, the experiment airlock is free. They've completed all of their tasks, including removing thermal insulation covers, removing electrical cables, and now the launch locks. Um, Mission Control Moscow's go. They can, Andrei Fajayev can begin moving the arm. Two hours, 22 minutes is the total time of EVA. Everything is on schedule. Copy, copy. All right, we have our video back. That's great. Coffee. Uh, Sergei is here a little bit on the side. He's, uh, he actually gives you a chance to see everything because he is a little bit on the side. Okay, very good. All right, waiting for your activities with the central lock in a few minutes. Okay, I'm uh, proceeding with opening the lock. Pulling the retainer out and rotating. All right, actually, it uh, kind of floated up almost on its own, so I don't believe we'll have any problems. So right now, we need to disengage it, right? Make sure it's, it's completely out of it. Artem? Can you copy us? Uh, there was some noise. Uh, could you please repeat? I released the central lock. Okay. We now we're standing by for the command. Okay, understood. Copy. 
Standing by. Sergey, you are go to proceed with the police in the central lock, okay? It's in work. Is it out? Yes, it's out. And Mission Control Moscow has given their go. The airlock is now going to move, be moved just slightly away from the Rossviet module using the robotic arm, and the spacewalkers are going to help disengage it. Okay. They're going to help disengage it from the Rossviet module, make sure that everything is totally disconnected before it can move further. Uh, in the uh, area of the uh, transportation, uh, break it and turn on the glacier. Glacier is on. Copy. Dima. Uh, can you step a little bit lower? Okay. All right, I'm in a safe zone. And keep translating. All right, standing by for your motion. Great view on your screen now of today's operation. You can see that kind of bulbous, elongated thing. That is the experiment airlock. It's attached to the European robotic arm about to take motion. Pouch and unintelligible. Could you say it again? What do I need to open? No, open the red. And use the short red. Uh, where it's uh, already secured. Okay. All right, I have positioned myself.
the spacewalkers have released that final launch lock between the airlock and the Rasvi module, completely freeing the airlock. It is now in the hands of IRA, the European robotic arm, at the controls of Andrei Fijayev inside the International Space Station. Uh, did you remove the tool carry? Yes. Well, actually, I, uh, for now, I left it on the handrail. And where exactly? Well, it's not on the way. Okay, now I see it. Well, let me just adjust it a little bit. You're looking at the point of view of our spacewalker today as he's looking at that experiment airlock, that cylindrical item that you see on the top left of your screen. It's at the controls of the European robotic arm preparing for motion.
сейчас это же не подготовка. Анантелечек. Expect the ear motion. Copy. If you're just joining us today, ending your work day, uh, two cosmonauts are on a spacewalk outside of the International Space Station. Their names are Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin. They're in their second in a series of three spacewalks to outfit the Nauka module. Uh, er, back in April, April 18th, they moved a radiator over from the Rosviet module over to Nauka. You can see it on the lower right-hand side of your screen. You can't see it right now, but now, now they're on the second spacewalk in the series where they're about to move an experiment airlock over to Nauka as well. Very similar steps to what they did earlier. Uh, confirm error motion. EV1 reports. Andrei Fedyaev at the controls of the European robotic arm now moving the experiment airlock. He's going to move it just about a meter away as our spacewalkers monitor. About 30 centimeters from the lock, no FODs, airlock is not obstructed, copy. Unintelligible. To give you an idea of what we're looking at today, you can see the European robotic arm that extends from the upper left-hand side of your screen to dead center. It's attached to the experiment airlock. That's that white cylindrical thing that you see right at the center of your screen, amongst some other external hardware of the International Space Station. And just to the left of that experiment airlock, you see one of our spacewalkers uh, closely monitoring the gap that has now been created. And in particular with the valves, oh, uh, with the flaps, okay. Uh, the distance is already about 1.5 meters. Copy. Still standing by? Because we can see that the airlock is still too close. Uh, 
Дим, правый светильник. Дим, you have the right uh, light on. Yes, I know. Is it? Is it a problem to reach the button? The distance is about two meters. Copy. The spacewalkers are continuing to monitor the airlock as it slowly backs away. Don't stand under this trailer. Please move further. Dintry, uh, what's the approximate distance now? Oh, three meters. Three meters. So do you believe that we can uh, proceed with the next activity? Yes. Yes, it's already out enough. Okay. All right, Dima. And you can start translating, Dima. You are going to close the central lock and the flap and translate towards Dmitry. And we'll start putting together the bundle. Okay, glisser camera is off. However, it was difficult to see the motion, the ERA, European robotic arm, just slowly inching that experiment airlock away from the Rasviat module. Uh, right now it's currently stopped motion, sitting about 10 feet away from the Rasviat module. The spacewalkers are going to do a couple of closeout tasks at the Rasviat worksite and then proceed over to Naoka. I am uh, next to the central lock, ready to start closing it. You are go, please proceed.
On the other side of this airlock relocation, Andre Fajayev is going to do very similar steps to what he's doing now. So at the moment, he just backed away the experiment airlock from the Rossiyet module, paused when it was about 10 feet away. You can see the spacewalkers doing some inspection, some closeout tasks at the moment right now. Once he slowly moves that over to the Nauka module, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to get it into the vicinity of the Nauka module and pause. The spacewalkers are going to make their way over to the Nauka module to greet it, and then they're going to assist slowly, slowly as Fajayev inches it in to eventually made it to the Nauka module. And I am. I guess I should move towards that lever. Yes. Yes, go to the second le uh, lever, the farthest. Okay, I secured the lever. And also... And I also uh, need to secure an edible, uh, the, the lever and the strut. And the uh, lock pin will stay in place, right? Yes. Prokopiev and Pertelin are working on some closeout tasks at their workstation. They'll remove some unneeded pieces of equipment on the outside of Rosviet, then close some multi-layer insulation flaps. Again, I'm talking about that blanket that protects Rosviet from the harsh environment of space. And finally, they're going to prepare that jettison bundle. Remember, jettison is when you throw an object away from the space station. Uh, they're collecting trash items, essentially. They've been collecting them as they go and brought some items from previous spacewalks as well. And they're going to prepare to jettison that at the very end of the spacewalk. OK. I secured the tie rod. OK. Sergey, then you need to secure the lever also, attach it to the ring, because uh, will be a removing it. You and Dima will be later removing it and putting it into the bag. Okay, copy. Okay. Lever. Secured, and we are putting everything away. Okay. Uh, was it easy to detach it? No, not really. Uh, I could. You're looking at the point of view now of Sergei Prokopiev. Okay, I've removed the tie rod. They're working on their first set of closeout tasks over at the Rosvia module, uh, their original work site of the day. Right now they're removing some ties from the airlock. Mm 
And the European robotic arm is back in motion with the airlock in its hands. The experiment airlock slowly but surely moving over to the Naoka module from its original home on the Rasviet module. The, the cosmonauts are on the Rasviet module doing some closeout tasks. They're removing some airlock tie rods, uh, closing multi-layer insulation flaps. That's that protective jacket that protects the hardware from the harsh realities of space. And then they're going to set up their bundle um, of hardware from this spacewalk and from previous spacewalks as well to prepare to jettison it at the end of the spacewalk. Yeah, 
As long as we are restrained here. Stand by a moment. And here we go. Artyom. Artyom, go ahead. А здесь вот эти шарниры на тяге, они не держатся плотно, вот один регион, такое колечко. Two hours, 36 minutes into today's spacewalk with our cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin. Uh, the goal of today is to move that that experiment airlock over to the Nauka module, away from its original home on the Rosviet module. Uh, you may not be able to tell, but it is moving at the controls of the robotic arm at the center top of your screen, that cylindrical white object that you see there. That is the experiment airlock. Once it's hooked up and installed to the Nauka module, it's just in an effort to outfit the Nauka module. It also got a radiator previously in April and on the third spacewalk that radiator is going to be brought online. Once operational that experiment airlock is going to be used to get scientific experiments out into the vacuum of space and back. It will not be used for human beings on spacewalks but it's a good opportunity to get some science outside of the International Space Station without having to do a spacewalk. Going towards the Earth. Mission Control Moscow both monitoring the actions of Prokopiev and Patelin as they finish their closeout tasks at the Rosviet module, and also speaking with Andrei Fijayev as he works to get that experiment airlock over to the Nauka module at the hands of the robotic arm. Copy. 
Would you like me to hold it? Or you would like me to press the wire? I got it. Two twists are not enough here. Just there, you heard a number of acronyms being used as the ground communicated to Andrei Fajayev. Uh, MRM1 is another name for the Rossviet module. That was what the experiment airlock was originally attached to and is now being moved. MRM2 is Poisk. That is the, the airlock that our spacewalkers exited out of just almost three hours ago. You may also hear them referred to as the MLM, not the MRM, but the MLM, which is the Nauka module.
the spacewalkers now we're seeing their point of view from their helmet cameras are preparing the jettison bundle and sometimes you can see the equipment air, excuse me the experiment airlock being moved in the background Dangled here. Uh, this way, somehow, it will be. I propose to leave it this way. It will make it easier to move. In three and a half minutes, it will be in insulation. And do you think you will need to rest? First? Well, actually, we can proceed slowly. Можно заранее светильники включить. Well, if you want, then yes, and you can turn on your lights. Как даже с выключенным светильником открываются периодически камеры, так что в целом, наверное, можно оставить их включенными на следующих светильниках. And leave them on as you translate towards the um, yeah, translation ring. I'm ready to translate. Good. But stand by for now. Let me orient myself. The spacewalkers have indicated that they're ready for their next step in their timeline. Uh, their tasks that they've been working on, they removed airlock tie rods, closed out some insulation flaps, and set up their bundle. That was that uh, orange uh, lump they're holding in their hands. That was the bundle that they're going to jettison away from the International Space Station at the end of their spacewalk. They prepared all of the items that they want so far for that. I think they're going to add some more as we go along as well. With those tasks closed out, they can begin to move over uh, using the Strela boom over to the Nauka module. Also, could you do a couple of minutes of glycer video, the MLI flaps, and so on? Of course. Always happy to be the movie director.
You can see the experiment airlock on your screen now with the hands of the robotic arm getting slightly closer to the Nauka module. Meanwhile, the spacewalkers are wrapping up their activities at the Rossviet module where the experiment airlock once was and are going to start moving over to meet that experiment airlock over at Nauka. Okay, I'm taking care of the restraining plate here. I'm uh, translating towards you. Yes. Okay. I think I need to correct the direction here a little bit and twist it the other way.
You can see our spacewalkers in motion now to the center left of your screen. They're going to meet the experiment airlock before its arrival. Are you there yet? No, not yet. I am moving. It's difficult to see, but in the lower left of your screen, you can see two spacewalkers, both in white spacesuits. Uh, one of them has blue stripes, that's Dmitry Patelin, and the one in the red stripes is Sergei Prokopiev. Right now, they've wrapped up their tasks at the Rosviet module and are now using the Straya 1 broom to get back to Naoka, where the experiment airlock will meet them. <laughs> Copy and on your go, you can begin. Okay, we are ready. So we are working for the plan. Copy. Hang on a second here, okay. Uh 
Okay, go go on ahead. Watch for the antenna. Yes, I see it. Let me take care of this. Our spacewalkers are now out of view behind those solar panels. Uh, just to the left of the solar panels is a skinny pole. That is the Straya boom that they're using to translate or move over to their next work site. Where are you tethering the handrail? Yes, you can use the handrail. Unintelligible. К первой стреле пойдем по короткой дуге, да? On Strela one, we're going to go on the shorter curve. They're moving on to their next work site right now, but just before, they completed a number of tasks at the Rosviet module as the airlock backed away. They closed out some multi-layer insulation over where the launch lock locations were. They also prepared a jettison bundle, uh, getting some unused items that they don't want anymore to, at the end of the spacewalk, get rid of. And right now, they're working on making their way over to the Naoka module. And on Strela 1, let's temp stow the jettison bundle. We also wanted to leave the Kapu carrier there. And let's pick up the cable bundle. Copy. When you have a chance, can you check the manual hot cold switch? Is it on zero, or maybe you got snagged on something? I actually lowered it. It got kind of hot. So I returned it back to six. No, actually, return it to zero. Zero. Okay, absolutely. Yes, copy. Zero. So lift it up to zero. Okay, it is up there. It's in the up position. Copy. The spacewalkers are using that Straya 2 boom to move back uh, to the Poisk airlock with the jettison bundle in tow. They're going to temporarily stow that jettison bundle onto Straya 1 and Prokopiev will retrieve a cable from inside the Poisk airlock. You, you 
With our spacewalkers going back to the Poisk airlock, it's a good time to put out a reminder that this is where the spacewalk began. These cosmonauts went out into the vacuum of space from the Poisk airlock. Uh, however, we're talking about two different kinds of airlocks today. Uh, the task of the day is to move an experiment airlock, which is currently at the hands of the European robotic arm making its way to the Nauka module. It's only for scientific experiments. Uh, so right now, Prokopiev is making his way to the Poisk airlock to retrieve a cable that he'll need later to hook up the experiment airlock that's on the robotic arm. Okay, so I, I am tethering it here. Here's a hook. That is holding that old bundle. Copy, and we're monitoring. The bundle is tethered. I can tighten it up a little. No, don't waste time on that. Okay. Can you give me that 
that little hook. Three hours, 10 minutes into today's spacewalk, almost halfway through the planned six and a half hour spacewalk. Uh, Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin are right on time with their tasks today. Uh, while they're working to stow the jettison bundle onto the Strayo one boom and about to move on to the Naoka module. In the meantime, sir, in the meantime, Fijayev is moving the experiment airlock with the robotic arm. So are you already here on the Australian transition ring? Not yet? Okay, yes. Okay, shall we translate? On your go. So, yeah, I'm just trying to turn myself around. Turn myself a little more. And you left the Krulak bag with you, correct? Yes, the Krulak bag is here. The Krulak bag should be on you. It is on me, yes. We have arrived. Take that tether. I have tethered it. And I am translating on the MLM handrail. Well, here we are by the passive attachment interface of the radiator. Okay. We have nine minutes before installation. So let's position ourselves around the interface and take a break. I want you to be careful, be extra attentive with the tether product. You can see the progress that the experiment airlock has made making its way over to the Naoka module. You can still see it in motion. Uh, towards the very bottom of your screen by those solar panels, you can sort of see our spacewalkers, uh, Prokopiev and Patelin, as they make their way over. Um, they're stopping at the radiator, that's that rectangle shape that you see during the previous spacewalk just last month. They did very similar steps that they're doing today, moving the radiator from the Rossviet module over to Nyoka. Uh, while they're going to be passing the radiator, they're going to take this opportunity to do an inspection of the radiator, take some imagery, because in the third spacewalk of this series, they're going to be pumping coolant and getting it online. Because we do have some time. Well, we just passed a space, a location where it looked like the MLI snagged a little bit. Right here, are you seeing it in the video? Yes, we see the video for now. But this 
blanket is there, but there are no connectors. And no, it, it, it's not snagged. Can you just check those blankets that are nearby, like on the right side, from the connectors? You're talking about this one. Yeah, this one's free as well. Yes, it's free. It, it looked like it might have gotten stuck, but it's not. To the left, it's good. On the right, there are no Malai blankets. What about at the top, on that other side? We would have to translate to see up top. Okay, copy. You can get stuck up there at the top. There's the radiator. It's not a very easy to access location. Why don't you continue translating? You will translate around the Yakut foot restraint. And then we'll work with the box there. Half of a revolution. Half of a rev. And move them to make sure that they are not touching any of the interface surfaces. Okay, let's do that during installation. Yeah, that makes sense. So we have six minutes until installation, so just position yourself in a comfortable way and take a break, and we'll be ready when the sun comes out. Okay, I'm going to translate up then. And yeah, Dimitri, translate to the Yakuri foot restraint and stand by there. Okay, we'll go. You can see the cosmonauts on the center of your screen doing some checkouts. Yeah. They're going to wait until an orbital sunrise to take a further look at it. You can use the radiator. Inaudible. You might have heard some conversations about some multi-layer insulation, some protective covers on the radiator. They're also looking at the radiator attachment interface, as well as some, a set of four screws that they want to take a look at, too, all while taking photos of the attachments uh, for the folks on the ground. At the top, there's the radiator. It doesn't let me pass through. It's a little sketchy. <laughs> It's better to have a wide area to pass through than a narrow one. Well, like like this is excellent. Do you need some help? No, no, it's okay. Will you reach your hook? This one? Yeah. Okay. Be sure you don't have to stretch out too far. No, I'm I'm quite conveniently positioned here. 
Will you take it off on the right? Three hours, 20 minutes into this spacewalk. Well, the main focus is to move the experiment airlock over to the Naoka module as part of a greater effort to outfit the Naoka module. They're doing some get ahead tasks for the third spacewalk in the series that's going to happen on May 12th. Uh, that the goal of that spacewalk is to get the radiator online. It's a very critical spacewalk. So they're using some of their time today while they happen to be passing by the radiator to do some checkouts, take a look at it with their own eyes, as well as take some photos of it for the folks on the ground before May 12th. You're seeing the balcony views of Mission Control Moscow now. They're keenly interested in the feedback and photos that the cosmonauts are taking of the radiator. There we go. Okay, everything's good. And we are resting. Yes, let's rest. Turned off the lights. We are in a momentary loss of signal at the moment as we transfer over between our communication satellites. We expect to get uh, video and audio back soon. Stop. 
Ты можешь уже снимать, наверное, сверху вижу. Сергей. We can probably remove. Inaudible. Не будет видео картинки. Сергей, there are still a few minutes before we get the video. Вы сейчас еще раз вручную проверите клапана и ски, что они не попадают. So now, uh, instead I propose that you manually check to make sure that none of the MLI blankets are in the way, and bolts 2, 3, 4, and 5, you can turn, half a turn, I'll make, pay particular attention to the MLI around bolt 5. Okay, copy. If you're just joining us, we're entering into the second half of our spacewalk. The experiment airlock was originally housed on the Rossviet module and is now in the process of being moved to Naoka. This is part two in a series of spacewalks. Part one was just a few weeks ago when they did almost very similar steps to move a radiator over from Rossviet to Naoka. Both the airlock and the radiator were launched on Space Shuttle Atlantis, STS-132, May of 2010. So you want us to screw in these screws? In the first half of our spacewalk today, our spacewalkers were over on the Rossviet side. They had to completely unattach the experiment airlock, its cables, its multi-layer insulation, um, everything that was attaching it to the Rossviet module. They had to be boots on the ground over on the outside of Rossviet to prepare it, and then Andrei Fedyaev on the inside of the International Space Station robotically is moving it over to the Naoka module. And now the spacewalkers in the second half are going to move over to the Naoka module and get it ready for installation. So now the bolts for two, three, four, and five. You can tighten them. And then when you, when we see video, you can record via the glisser. We, we already uh, did some filming. Okay. Yes, just uh, keep taking images, and we'll have five minutes uh, before we will return the uh, video. Okay. Copy.
You can see the position of the International Space Station from our balcony view of Mission Control Moscow. It's on the upper right side of the screen, and you can see that the space station is moving to an orbital sunrise. Once we get those live videos back of the International Space Station, we should have a good view, which is important to Mission Control Moscow, as right now they're inspecting that radiator. They want to make sure that everything is flush and covered properly before their spacewalk on May 12th. I'm still taking the images, okay. All right, so let's turn the cameras off. Yes, I already did that. Dmitry, uh, did you tighten the bolt, or are you still working on it? We are waiting for your go. Yeah. You have a go. Tighten bolts, too. Three, four, and five. Okay. Can work. I start with bolt five. Copy. I need half the turn, right? Uh, yeah, just uh, make a maximum turn if it will be a little bit more than that. Okay. As far as you can do it. Okay. While we're in this lot in this loss of signal, work continues outside the International Space Station. The spacewalkers are on the radiator of the Naoka module. Uh, they did some inspection, took some photos of the radiator, and now they're working on tightening a series of four bolts. But do not overdo it. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, the number five is tightened. Uh, could you uh, estimate the movement, how many? I would say probably one-third of the turn. Working on number three? Just a little bit. Probably one-tenth of a turn, that's all it took. Copy. Number four required 90 degrees, nine zero, and they won't go any further. That's pretty good. Well, maybe 100 degrees. We're back with our live views as our spacewalkers continue work on the radiator. Copy. We had a very brief uh, calm dropout. What about number two? Uh, or have you not started on that? I tightened the third one, and I'm about to start on number three. 
It's on my side, yes. Okay, copy. Okay, we started receiving the video. A pledge. And now we're back with our live views. Of the, our views went out for just a moment. Our spacewalkers are at work on the radiator. Uh, it's not quite the focus of this spacewalk, but it will greatly help uh, for the May 12th spacewalk, the third in the series to outfit the Naoka module. Okay, I've approached the location. Can you see? Yes, we can see. This flap, you know, when it's straightened, yes, it can have a contact. Uh, but when I push it down, it's apparent that it cannot be, get caught into the in the connector. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Thanks for understanding. Appreciate it. So, uh, when you were in insulation, you uh, filmed the entire cycle, right? Uh, using Glisser camera. Yes. Okay. Copy. Then go ahead and tighten bolt number two. It's already tightened. It took about 20, 30 degrees. Okay. Copy. Thank you very much. And now you can move to the pressurized adapter of the MLM towards plane 14. We're doing very well. We are waiting for the alignment, and when you reach the location, just stand by, and then we'll be helping you as much as we can. Okay, copy. And it's a job well done as our cosmonauts wrap up their tasks on the radiator. They inspected some insulation and tightened some bolts, as well as gave it a visual inspection and took some photos. Meanwhile, the experiment airlock is moving closer and closer to the Naoka module. Um, now it's in its final mov movements to inch that experiment airlock closer and closer. Uh, not quite making contact. Um, our, our spacewalkers are going to make their way over there and assist as it's just a few inches away. You can see that our spacewalkers on the bottom of the screen don't have too far to travel from that experiment airlock on the Nyauka module uh, right at the top of your screen. But it is in their task to make their way over there, and that's what they're doing now. The task is expected to take about 10 minutes.
хорошо. Окей, let's see. Я принципе по этой стороне могу слышать. Actually, I can translate along this side. Yes, if you think there is enough room, yes, there is a good translation path. Uh, can you hold the cable? rotated all of a sudden. Okay. Uh -huh. Like that. The second one. Did you secure it? Yes. Together with the first one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have a proposal. Uh, secure the cable to yourself, the whole bundle. All right. It's tethered. The cable is on me. Copy. Our spacewalker is now getting into position, getting ready to monitor the receiving of the experiment airlock from the European robotic arm. The experiment airlock is just going to be just a couple of feet within the Naoka module, and they're going to make their way over there right now to be the eyes for Andrei Fedyaev to say, just a little more to the right, no, this is the exact alignment that we need to be in before, that he, before he moves the experiment airlock closer in for a soft docking. Uh, look under your feet and be careful. This job that the cosmos that the cosmonauts are gonna have the the using their eyes to guide Andre Fajayev, this is a job known as GCA or ground control assist. Um, again, it's a bit of a misnomer because they're not on the ground, they're up in space as you can see on your screen. Um, but they're going to use their duties to help Fajayev fine tune the position of the airlock before he brings it in. This is a new view that we have. It's a camera on the Russian segment of the International Space Station looking at a docking target on the airlock as it inches closer and closer. You can see the blue docking target that Fijayev is using to align with the European robotic arm.
Мы тебе своего положения видим. Do you see the node model from your position? Node model? Yes, at least part of it. Точнее переходы. After you translate it. Yes, yes, I can see. During the next EVA, if we have enough time, we will try to install one or two handrails. Uh, so you actually have a moment to assess which would be the best translation path for this installation. Cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev is the spacewalker that you see at the center of your screen. He's making his way up to that cylinder. That is the experiment airlock, and he's going to perform a ground control assist, or basically be the extra set of eyes for Andrei Fajayev as he uses the robotic arm to inch it into place. It's at your discretion, but you can actually approach closer uh, to the airlock. Inaudible. No, we are close enough. Uh, actually, we have a good view. Copy again. As I said, that's at your discretion. Okay, then. Remain where you are now, and we'll be standing back. Yes, and because uh, should we go to the circular handrails, there is there would be even a danger of contact and actually floating back. So we better stay here. and the translation or their movement is complete. They are at the location where they're going to monitor the experiment airlock as it inches in closer to its docking port.
Там еще адаптер ПРМ, ты сейчас обходишь. ПРМ адаптер. Please be very careful, it has a target on. Yes, I understand. I was bypassing it very carefully. Адаптеры ПРМ и на ОППшках у нас мишени. On the adapter. И, соответственно, эти мишени, они... We needed uh, to work with ERA, and those targets are important, so, and they are kind of sensitive. Copy. Uh, watch your back. Ira is behind you. It's okay. Dmitry, we are standing by for the continuation of the meeting, so uh, there, uh, our participation is not required, so we are just standing by, watch, and we can uh, take a more fill with camcorder, and after uh, the meeting, uh, we could take more images. Okay, yes, and we already turned it off. And you'll be able to take the cables. Yeah. Except for the cables, we don't need anything. So uh, let's uh, save some battery charge. And right now, we're just waiting. Okay. You're getting a unique view of a helmet camera from our cosmonaut uh, with a 
with a good view of the experiment airlock and the Naoka module. Uh, the two are very close together and they're performing a ground control assist. Use their eyes to line up the experiment airlock perfectly with the docking mechanism. This is the view from the International Space Station on the Russian segment. Its eyes as it's looking out at the experiment airlock, almost, almost centered on the target. You'll continue to hear a chatter with the help of an interpreter from our spacewalkers as they use their eyes to align the experiment airlock with that docking mechanism. Uh, okay. Uh, we can get, you can get a little bit closer, just a little bit to the model. And this task right here, robotically berthing the experiment airlock to the Naoka module, is what it's all about today. This is what our cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin have been working at over the past four hours of their spacewalk. With views like this, you can see just how valuable it is to have these helmet cameras, these point of views of the astronauts who are performing the ground control assist to help with the alignment. Okay, guys, for your information, we just aligned with the target using the camera that you've installed. Okay. It looks ideal.
так, 29 оплата вот здесь. Okay, here is panel 29. It's okay. Can you see number four? Leon, please. It's uh, against my left shoulder, I'd say. Guys, uh, for your information, there will be a motion. We need to move back. The European robotic arm is moving the experiment airlock within 25 centimeters of the Nauka module. Three, zero, zero. Okay, copy. Is this uh, correct until contact? No. And slowly with this view, you can see the Earth views going away between the experiment airlock and the Naoka module as the experiment airlock makes its way in. It looks like the mating surfaces are not parallel. I'll try again. Repeat, please. The mating surfaces are not parallel. Copy, thank you. If we use the station coordinates, uh, I think it's in the your direction, along the your axis. But going to do some more alignment. The pedals on the error adapter side. They are almost to the corres their corresponding part. Let me check. Thank you, we copy. Maybe it will go along the guide rails and there will be mechanical alignment.
If you're just joining us, two cosmonauts are outside of the International Space Station, and the goal of the day is to relocate the experiment airlock. That is that white cylindrical shape that you see in the left upper side of your screen attached to that European robotic arm. It launched with the Rosviet module, and Today, we moved it over to the Naoka module. Right now, they're working on getting it perfectly aligned with the Naoka mo module's docking system. They're fine-tuning its movements to get it into the right position, and then they'll work to get it installed. The voices that you're hearing, that's Mission Control Moscow talking to cosmonaut Andrei Fajayev. He's inside the International Space Station at the controls of that European robotic arm. Камеру нам нужно повернуть на лаптоп РСМЛА. Так, у нас PMU-11 Basic и FOR PMU Watch. Cosmonaut Andrei Fajayev inside the International Space Station is working with Mission Control Moscow to get that experiment airlock aligned. На лаптопе РСМЛА у тебя должен быть выбран формат стыковка шка. На выходные 4 часа, 10 минут. Мы идем нормально по графику. Хорошо, Дима. Добрый день. EVA PET is now 4 hours and 10 minutes. Unclear.
This experiment airlock is being robotically relocated by and Andrei Fedyaev. This is with the European robotic arm, or ERA, which is driving the experiment lock. It's 36 feet long and serves as the main manipulator of the Russian segment. S-21 is complete. Copy, Andrei. You have a go to proceed to test 22. 22 is in work. Okay, so what about the recording on RSMLM? Do I need to activate it on this laptop? Andrei, there is no need. Okay, I am not activating it then. And the experiment airlock is moving in. I want to draw your attention over to your screen just so you know what you're looking at. You can see that handrail number 4559. The experiment airlock is the object that's white on the upper left-hand side of your screen moving into the slightly off-white Naoka module just above that number there. That's the motion that we're all monitoring here in Mission Control Houston. Test 22 is complete. The DZG-14 uh, sensors were not illuminated. Copy. Standby. And the X uh, coordinate value is 0.65. Andrei, could you please turn at an angle the camera that is uh, looking in, uh, through the window so that it can see the head? Okay, copy.
Moscow station on space ground one regarding uh, the head of the docking mechanism. Andrea, could you please come again? We did not copy your last. You won't be able to see the head of the docking mechanism because it is already inside the cone. Uh, so you, it is not visible. Okay, copy. So there is no use and no sense to remove and uh, reposition the camera. Andrei, still, could you please reconfigure the camera in such a way so that it so that it can see the probe uh, if uh, you know for uh, for for some reason we decide uh, to. Uh, abort and to uh, move it away, I mean the uh, airlock from uh, is Okay, in copy that. Minutes. In that case, of course, I will reposition the copy. camera. Live views of Mission Control Moscow here as they're working with cosmonaut Andrei Fajayev inside the International Space Station. Earlier, we saw a view of a camera inside the Russian segment. It looks like he's going to go over to that and readjust it slightly so that Mission Control Moscow can get a good view of the alignment so that it can be robotically berthed to the Naoka module. As we talked about a moment ago, Andrei Fajayev is uh, just on the other side of the camera, adjusting it so that they can get a better view of the alignment. The view that you're receiving now is from inside the Russian segment of the International Space Station as it looks out at the now excuse me as it looks out at the experiment airlock.
Moscow station, station run one. I have repositioned the camera. I cannot do better because I cannot see the probe currently. Andre, I think the battery actually has discharged on the camera. You know, I, it's exactly, you know, my thoughts to change out the battery. I will do the change out right now. Four hours, 23 minutes into this spacewalk today with Dmitry Patelin and Sergei Prokopiev. The goal being to move the experiment airlock that you're seeing on the right of your screen there and attach it to the Nauka module. Um, movement of the European robotic arm has stopped. They're taking a moment to take a better look at the alignment from all angles uh, with the help of Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin's helmet cameras. Of course, we are in an orbital nighttime at the moment, uh, so they're going to work to turn some, some lighting on on, the ex on their helmets. They're also using Fedyaev on the inside of the International Space Station with the camera views right out the window, um, looking at some different angles of all of the different angles that they can get in order to get it perfectly aligned. I changed out the battery, so it should be good now. Andrei, thank you so much. We are getting the video. While the cosmonauts in Mission Control Moscow work to get that airlock aligned just perfectly, let's go over some of the tasks that we have completed today so far. First, the cosmonauts, Patelin and Prokopiev, made their way over to the Rosviet module, demated a series of six cables, um, installed them, stowed them out of the way, uh, removed some multi-layer insulation from the experiment airlock as well, and as well as taking off some protective covers and some airlock launch locks on the Rossviet side. Then we, the robotic arm moved, oh, moved the experiment airlock over to the, the Nauka module, and while it was doing that, our spacewalkers did some tasks to close out over at the Rossviet module, including removing some airlock tie rods, uh, closing some multi-layer insulation flaps, and set up their bundle of hardware uh, to jettison later on in the spacewalk. They got their bundle together and stowed it away. And then they moved on over to the radiator on Nauka and did an, an inspection of it. They used, uh, they took some photography and videography there. And then they moved on over to the Naoka 
port where the airlock is going to be, and that's where they're at right now, uh, doing a ground control assist to get there, to get that aligned just perfectly, um, helping Andrei Fedyaev at the controls of the European robotic arm. The spacewalk began at 3 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern, and has been going on for almost 4 hours and 30 minutes so far. Station Moscow on space ground one for Andrei. Go ahead on space to ground one. Andrei, stand by. Command should be sent right now. And also you have to load a data set number five. Okay, copy. Auto sequence number five should be loaded. Now it's not the auto sequence, it is data set number five. Okay, now I understand. Uh, data set number five should be loaded. So I pressed standby and now I am loading the data set number five. Data set number five is being loaded.
Data set number five is loaded. So the, I have in the error field data sequence avoided. Andre, acquire the point of control, please. The conversations continue in Mission Control Moscow, uh, occasionally relaying to Andrei Fedyaev about some steps in the, for the ultimate goal of aligning the experiment airlock to the Naoko module. Uh, we're just over four and a half hours into the spacewalk as the International Space Station is flying over Brazil in an orbital nighttime. Hey, have you acquired point of control, Andrei? Yes. It is um, IV MMI. Okay, could you please dump danger uh, to nominal, Andrei? MMI and ERA fields and uh, nominal safe. Uh, we have give you a go to load auto sequence number five. Andre, copy. Uh, auto sequence number five loading is in work. Has the auto sequence been loaded, Andre? Yes, it is loaded. Comp ins ID 5, uh, that's the name I can see, okay? Send operational command, Andre. Andrei, go to manual mode. I have uh, control co uh, control hold, and I'm going to the manual mode. And uh, on top, uh, in manual mode, on top of the screen, you will have the yield command. Yes, I have it. Send this command. And then it has to be confirmed. All right, I'm sending it and I'm confirming it. So the mode will change to compliant hold after you have sent yield command. Go ahead. Right now I have dynamic uh, rebirthing hold. The mode chamber. Press discard. Andrei, and select task number two. Yes, we are watching. In the flexible mode, so that we can mate it. For now, we have the off nominal option, which is possible. But now we are still along the path towards automatic birthing. Task number two has been selected. But for now, we are Copy, Andrei. Now you positioning can ourselves and monitoring. You can think about possible handrails that you may tether yourself to for when we are in flexible mode. Okay.
Я тут дальше, конечно, не пройду, Дима, а у тебя, может быть, там... I can't really translate any further, Dimitri, but maybe you have some handrails. Yes, there are some handrail options. Ну, дело как раз в том, то, что если в режиме податливости и в ручном... So if we're in flexible mode and we're mating manually, well, maybe if Dimitri translates closer to the node module, because I have the adapter. Yeah, I have two danger messages, uh, corrupt and unintelligible and uh, uh, aborted. Copy. Moscow station. If what if we do the alignment using steps and uh, uh, listening to the commands of the EVA operators and then maybe manually somehow try to align uh, the uh, the airlock chamber? Andrei, stand by one. Mission Control is continuing to work with the spacewalkers and, and Andrei Fajayev at the controls of the European robotic arm on the next steps. Andre, acquire the point of uh, point of control, please. Андрей, did you copy? Okay, so I have acquired the point of control in auto sequence uh, has uh, we were not successful with a second attempt to birth. So we're approaching the option of transitioning area to flexible mode. Соответственно, вы пока подумайте получше над расположением. So, think now about how you might position yourselves. Yes, we've thought about it. We've been exploring a number of options today to get that experiment airlock just aligned perfectly, whether that's Andrei Fedyaev adjusting a camera on the inside of the Russian segment for a better view, uh, repositioning the cosmonauts, Sergei Patel, excuse me, Dmitry Patel and Sergei Prokopiev for, for a better view, and also even discussing the position of the robotic arm as well. There's a lot of factors at play. Three. Go ahead. This is the plan. Now, for the attachment interfaces, we have a misalignment on the mating planes. So we're transitioning. When we transition the arm into flexible mode, you'll have to look at those planes. And if possible, you may be able to pull them closer together. But the main task is to align the two 
plane so that they are parallel. But for now, it is not in flexible mode yet. Okay. You can see the interface very well. Inaudible. Yes. Confirm. Copy. Station Moscow, Andrei. Jump to the auto sequence and load data set number four. Come again. What should I do with this auto sequence, the one that I have now? You have to dump it, remove it. Okay. Copy. It is done. I also have the danger message still on. Should I acknowledge it? Should I dump it as well? Yes. And after that, uh, start loading data set number four. I also have another danger message. Andrei, deviation out of limit. Andrei, we can see that. So data set number four should be loaded, right, Moscow? Yes, we confirm. DS number four. And after it is done, you will have to load auto sequence number three. So first, of course, you will acquire the point of control, and after that, you will load the auto sequence number three. Copy that. Just over four hours, 45 minutes into this spacewalk today, our cosmonauts moving into different positions uh, with their flashlights on their helmet cameras, uh, Mission Control Moscow talking to Andre Fajayev about some possible plans to move forward to get the alignment just right.
Она прям с этого ракурса сижу. Заметно перекосила ее. It has shifted over visibly. Dimitri, so this is the plan that we're going to try. Okay. Are they going to pull back a little bit? They say that when they are transitioning to flexible mode, the airlock may move back a little bit. Are you done with the data set loading? Yes. And now I'm acquiring the point of control. So then when they and after that load, I'm going to get number three and eight. We will be using the vehicle attachment interface and then in that boom and the conical section inaudible because the airlock chamber hasn't quite reached it. Copy. Andrei, uh, have you from your uh, position, do you think you'll be able to yes, I reach have. the airlock chamber? And I'm loading out of sequence number three. Say that again. Copy. Proceed. From your position, will you be able to reach the airlock and to shift it around a little bit? Yes. Well, in terms of aligning it in the parallel plane. No, Dimitri, as I understand it, you are now in position, inaudible. You'll have to make a motion together. Yes, I understand. To press it, that's fine. But in terms of rotating it to creating to create that torque, well, you have to pull it towards yourself, towards the gap. Okay, I will give it a try. Let's see. So maybe from direction where it's possible to trap it and try to turn it around somehow. Because it's really misaligned at this point. AS number three has been copy loaded in and the ID three and it tells you about four minutes. We'll have an LOS. Okay, copy. Andrei, send operational command. And also will be in installation. Okay, standing by for that. It is sent. And the remote now is dynamic control hold. Copy, send, stand by, and select task 25. S25 is selected. Mission control is is now weighing the option 
exploring the option of unrigidizing that European robotic arm so that the two cosmonauts can guide the experiment airlock in themselves. Task 25 is complete. Now please proceed to Task 26. In work. Test 26 is done. Copy. Stand by. Standing by. Sergey and Dmitry, the arm is in flexible mode. You can proceed to aligning the planes. Okay, copy. Andrei, Sergei, Dmitry will try to do the adjustments manually. Uh, they will try okay, to... Dmitry, can you pull it towards uh, yourself a little bit? The uh, air lock a little bit from side to side uh, so that the sensors um, work better. Okay, copy. Okay, there we go. You can see the cosmonauts now trying to push it into place. They've been a, made a couple of attempts here to get that that airlock aligned. Okay, are you ready? For me, it's like totally parallel. For me, too, about a centimeter between the planes, two centimeters for us. Okay, just hold it in that position. Moscow. Station, I have okay. received caution. Message, an intelligible test error. Copy, Andrei. We're just holding the whole module in our hands. Will we will you be able to press one against the other so there is no gap in between? Okay, one, two, three. There is no gap of maybe half a centimeter. It won't go any further because there are guides. But there should be a click, maybe. Mission Control Moscow, they're working with the cosmonauts on a couple of options. Uh, their first couple of attempts to robotically birth the experiment airlock to the Naoka module were unsuccessful. Uh, the first was with automatic commands to the ERA, and the other one was for Fajayev to manually maneuver that European robotic arm. Uh, we went with a third option, which is having a limp robotic arm. They unrigidized it so that our crew members could manually use their hands to guide that experiment airlock into place. And uh, before we lost our video feed, that's what they were working on. And we're, we hope to get our live views back soon. Well, it should have clicked in, but maybe we can press it tighter a little bit, but we can't hold it long in that position. They're going to transition air to automatic mode. Continue holding it in this position. Well, yeah, it's practically, the two planes are practically together, even the hooks, I think, if there's a bit of a push, they will close. Okay. Oh, okay. The gap is less than half a centimeter. Yeah, maybe press it a little bit with the arrow or maybe at least hold it at this position.
there are now three arms on that experiment airlock, one of Prokopiev, one of Patelin, and one of that ERA, the European robotic arm, to get this experiment airlock aligned and in position. Okay, keep holding, and now there will be a command to retract the head. We're standing by. This is Andrei in space to ground one. Andrei, we're going to send a command from the ground for uh, automatic hard mate. Uh, yes, and I can hear the drives uh, running. Copy. And the alignment was successful with the help of the two cosmonauts, and now the hooks are driving. Okay, the probe retraction started. Stand in by. Five hours into today's spacewalk, and the hooks are driving to get the experiment airlock permanently latched to the Naoka module after its relocation. About half the probe is already retracted. We are pressing on. Uh, the adjustable uh, tether, I hope it won't be on the way we should have secured it on the uh, handrail. Installation of the experiment airlock is still underway, about halfway through at this point, after the assist from our cosmonauts to get it perfectly aligned. Um, but just because the airlock is installed does not mean that it's ready to go. Um, the cosmonauts next could um, connect some electrical panels between the experiment airlock and the Naoka module. If you'll remember when it was on Rosviet at the beginning of the spacewalk, they worked to uninstall those cables, um, and during the spacewalk, they could reinstall them now that it's on the Naoka module. Okay, the interface is closing. I believe the remaining gap is about one to two millimeters. M maximum half centimeter. Okay. The closure command has uh, gone through, 
and we actually have an indication that the uh, capture is confirmed. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. It's done, but now we're standing by for further command. Yes, the two millimeter. You mean two millimeters between the planes? Yes. Okay, that's that's where. Okay, where the electrical connectors are. That's where I was looking. Okay. And capture is complete. Andre, can you hear the actuators operating? All right. There's sunshine again. Well, it would be nice to bathe on the, in the sunlight. Uh, please repeat. Uh, Moscow Station on Space Ground 1, please repeat your last call. We're Andy, flying over by the now. Yes, uh, no, uh, I think it has uh, completed uh, operating. Uh, Andrei, uh, you're coming in. Unclear. Okay, guys. Right now, uh, before we translate to the airlock, uh, your rent, uh, panel 29, let's start uncovering the cable and remove the caps. Okay. After a couple of attempts, the cosmonauts have successfully um, robotically birthed the experiment airlock to the Nauka module and have successfully installed it. Now they're going to move on to connecting some cables. I believe we need to concentrate on the operations with the cable and then we'll press on. Okay. Copy out. Station Moscow on Space Ground 1 for Andrei. Go ahead and Space Ground 1. Inaudible. Andrei, uh, can you hear the drive operating now or not? Moving on to their next tasks, the cosmonauts are going to be making the connection between the experiment airlock and Nauka. It has already been installed, but now they want to uh, electrically install it. Uh, there are six electrical sockets on the airlock side and six on the Nauka side for a total of 12 connectors that they'll need to plug in. Looks like they're removing the caps right now. They'll be beginning on the airlock side. Okay. Uh, maybe I should start uh, okay, uh, the caps on, on the handrail. Okay. Uh, do you see the computer panel? Is it somewhere behind the panel? The uh, thrusters? It should be somewhere right next to you. 
So there are two next to each other. What should be our reference point? FP14, it should be right next to the target, actually facing it. Uh, all right. Is it currently covered with MLI? Yes, exactly. Uh, we need handrail 4063, and that's where we'll be installing the cable holder. The cosmonauts getting their work site on the um, experiment airlock ready, or excuse me, next to the experiment airlock on the Nauka module. Uh, they will be transferring over to the to the experiment airlock once they get their work site all set up. First, they need to stow their cables onto a handrail, locate the panels, the electrical panels that they need to be connecting to, and then they can begin their tasks. 4063, yes. We'll be installing the cable holder on it. Okay. Okay, there is a label on it, HP-14. And we can see that the flap is stitched up here, right? Yes, it's stitched up. And there are some caps here, too. Uh, okay, let's say maybe we shouldn't drop out. You'll need number 14. Yes. About the uh, caps, we'll need to take care of them first. We, would, we could use the tape here. Hold it. Okay. Through the helmet cam of the cosmonauts, we can see the electrical panel that they're going to be working with uh, to make those uh, 12 connections, six on this side and six on the other side. Which ones do we need, all six of them? Artyom. Yes. Because all uh, caps are actually taped here with the electrical tape. Well, then we'll have to use the knife and cut through the tape. We need the, to remove caps from one to six. All right. And it's like lock taped. Go 
rest of it. You cannot just pull it off. No, no way. So those caps are actually taped up with the electrical tape, right? Exactly, and it's the red tape. We need a cutter here. And do you have a cutter? Yes, I, I have. Before these electrical connections between the airlock and the Nauka module can be made, they first need to remove the caps on these electrical connectors on the panel that you see in front of you. Uh, they ran into a slight problem in that they're taped into place. So now the cosmonauts are working with mission control on a plan forward. Three are taped up, three are not. Copy. It looks like I managed to undo one, but the ones that are sitting deeper, yes, especially one. Okay, Sergey Dmitry. Yeah. So about five hours, 15 minutes into this spacewalk, just to recap what we've, what what they've accomplished so far. The big task of the day was moving the airlock over to Naoka. Um, it took a couple of attempts to get it aligned right. There were some um, automatic commands of the European robotic arm. There was some manual commands by Andrei Fedyaev. Um, ultimately, we went with rid with unrigidizing that. European robotic arm so that our cosmonauts can put it into place. The next step is to install some electrical connections. There are six on the airlock, six on Nauka. Uh, but the first step in that is to remove the caps. I removed two. Copy. Now, and the hooks are closed of the experiment airlock to the Naoka module. The cosmonauts uh, helped assist for its capture, and they were successful in doing so. Uh, it was a ground effort to get this completely installed, and they've accomplished that task. We also have the needle uh, nose pliers in the crew lock bag. Uh, so you could probably use those. Yeah, we could try. Oh, uh, the tape also connects to connectors. It's Through the helmet camera, you can see that they're about halfway done removing the caps on these electrical connectors. What's easier to get? No, okay, go ahead and give it to me. Are you tethered? Is it tethered? Thank you. 
Okay, I'll try the pliers. Nope, no good. Looking at the point of view of Dimitri Patelin as he works in his tool bag that he brought out with him today uh, on getting some of that tape removed from those electrical connectors. So you couldn't get under the tape with the pliers? No, I couldn't. All right. Let's take, uh, take a cutter from Sergei and try to use it. Okay, we'll do. No, so the needle nose pliers couldn't work here, yes. Okay, now I think I caught it. Yes. All right, this part is done. Removed. All right, this tape is off. Can you take it? Work continues outside the International Space Station um, on the experiment airlock now connected to the Nauka module as they work to get the caps free from the electrical connections so they can eventually plug them into each other. Uh, should I hold it or push it a little bit? Try right now. Okay. Uh, I have one left. Are you? Is it far from you? No. Not that simple. Uh, 
do I need to cut more? Yes, please. All right, hold on. Then, let me push it a little bit. It's very inconvenient location. Okay, like that. All right, the cap is off. Wait, sir. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Okay, let me cut it. Let me finish the cutting. Uh, we cannot go to uh, the panel 29 because the command uh, Taka didn't go through, so. I'm just reminding you that we'll need to uh, put it on uh, handrail 40, 69. All right, it's done. And Sergei Prokopiev has successfully removed all of the caps off of the electrical connectors on his end. took a little bit of elbow grease. Some of the caps had uh, some tape on them that he had to remove in order to get those caps off, but it looks like he was successful in taking them all six off. So this cable holder should be installed on the handrail 4063. I can see 45. Forty-one. Uh, the handrail goes from uh, panel 14 and towards a panel 29 on the airlock. So try to look in that direction. Well, so far we see they all start with 45. Oh, did you say 4063? Yes. That one. She's on the is it on the airlock? And we can uh, tether to it, right? Right now, do not hook uh, your tethers uh, to the airlock handrails yet, but you can install uh, the cable holder on that handrail on the airlock. Well, I don't know. Maybe we should wait for the capture, and when the interface will be established, maybe we should wait, and then we should translate to the airlock. Yes, guys, you're right. Actually, we are making some updates to the timeline. We will start with the panel. Uh, 14. So right now we are standing by for a go to press on working with panel 14. One four. 
копия. So while the cosmonauts had originally planned to make the electrical connections on the airlock side first, it looks like they'll be installing them on the Nauka module first. Both sides have to get done. Um, there'll be 12 connections total, uh, six on each side. You can see the cable bundle in Patellan's hands now as we reach the 5 hour 30 minute mark of the spacewalk. Okay, Dmitry now. And so we start with connect to patch panel 14. Yes, you may start there. And also, at the same time, you could do connect to patch panel 29. So you pick which one. I'm in front of panel 29, so I'll do that one. And I'm almost at uh, connect to panel 14. And I will hand you the large, small tether, and you can secure yourself to the handrail. Mission Control is using a 29 and 14. When they're talking about these patch panels, they're talking about uh, the electrical connections on the airlock side, that's 29, and the Nauka side, which is 14. Handrail 40, 50, 6. And forty sixty three. Так. Начинаем. Начинаем. 
Patel in there, you're looking at his point of view as he undoes a wire tie so that he can extend the cables in his hands. The cables will need to be slightly routed as the connector panels on the airlock and the the Nauka module are not exactly next to each other. One cosmonaut will need to go route the cables and plug it into the other side. Agreed. I'm removing the cover from Cable 29.6, I have it in my hand. Good. You can see both points of view on your screen now. We're looking at uh, Patelin, and he's working on his electrical panel. And just through his eyes, you can see our other spacewalker, Prokopiev, as he works to undo the caps on his patch panel. One to nine six is made it, correct? Yes, one to nine six. Now the next one. XFP twenty nine four now copy. Again, a bit of a translation of the lingo that they're using here. There are six electrical connectors on either side. So when he says 29-6, uh, this is referring to patch panel 29, it's the meaning that is on the airlock side and is one of the six electrical connectors has been made. At the connector patch panel, I'm removing the cover. Copy. The fourth electrical connector has been connected on the airlock side as well. They're not necessarily going in order of the numbers. You can see two cables plugged in right now, six and four. There are a total of six, but they have accomplished two so far. I rotated. And uh, so twenty nine four is now connected. That's correct. Now the cable holder. Сергей. Да. Сергей. Основного сейчас насос включен. 
and you have the main, the primary pump. No. Uh, I should probably deactivate the backup pump. Yes, if it was on, then uh, turn it off, the backup pump. Copy. Backup pump is off or FF. Primary pump is on. And I'm holding the connector of cable 29.5 and plate, uh, connector plate 29.5. Five, I'm removing the cover. Starting to work. Twisting. Twenty-nine-five cable is secured. We're now halfway done with the cable installation on the airlock side. When they say twenty-nine-five, again we're talking about the number five cable has been plugged into the number 29 patch panel on the airlock. So the third in a series of six cables have been connected to the airlock. I have in my hand copy. Removing the cover. Cover pad 29.3 on the connector plate. Working with the connector. And I rotated it and secured. Yes. Cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev, this is his point of view as he works to install cables onto the airlock side. This airlock, of course, was relocated from the Rossviet module and is now getting plugged in at its new location. He's over halfway done. Connector. XFP 29.2, I'm holding the connector in my hand. I removed the cover, and re so I'm removing the cover from half a pad 29.2 connector. Yes, understood. And mating it right now. The tab is open. Yes, it is. Rotating now. 
Вот это вот это девять два. Well, the work continues here on the meeting point between the experiment airlock and the Nauka module, uh, one cosmonaut on each end. Um, Mission Control Moscow has relieved Andre of his duties now that the airlock is successfully installed. Copy. Connecting. So all six uh, connectors are mated. Work is now complete connecting those wires to the airlock. But that's at your discretion. It doesn't have to be precisely that number, handrail. Well, it's close by. So there are some cables like there, which for which you should use the cable holder. Okay, here is the cable holder. So here I think I need to disconnect from the cable. Okay, first you have to create some slack in the cable. So it travels freely. Смотри, вот зажим, который поддерживает планка вот внутри карабина, вниз оттяни вот эту планку. That you see here on the hook. Да, после этого кабель будет легко скользить. You clamp it tight, and then the cable will go freely. I think you can remove the slack now. It's not secured here, not restrained. And then uh, attach to Krylog bag. Okay, I'm uh, attaching to the handrail here.
Так, ну, максимально сильно от руки закрутил. Окей, okay, I hand tighten yeah. as much as I could. Yeah. Copy. Снимаю фал. Окей, okay, I'm uh, reattaching myself. Okay, one hook is attached. Transportation foam is fixed. I restrain. Ну, второй тоже снимать. Копи. Да, снимать. Окей, этот один. You may release. In my opinion. I agree. Okay, I'm closing here. I'm ready for mating. Finito, можно приступать. давай, да, в любом. In any sequence, you have a go. MLM номер один укладку. Там давай четвертый. MLM kit number one. So you may do four, five, and six. Ну, они тем более у нас как раз глубоко эти разъемы находятся, поэтому лучше с них So just as we did on the side of the airlock, we need to install those the other end of those same cables on to the Nauka side.
So similar to how we did on the other side, uh, when they were talking about patch panel 29, of course referring to the airlock side, they'd say something like 29.3, meaning the third cable is installed onto the airlock side. Um, instead of 29, we're going to be hearing 14. So 14 is referring to the patch panel on the Nauka side, and there are a series of six hooks, or, excuse me, six electrical connectors that they're going to be installing one by one. Mission Control Houston here, monitoring the spacewalk. We are now almost six hours into the spacewalk. The view that you're getting is Mission Control Moscow, both rooms working together on the spacewalk uh, so far. They've been successful in installing the experiment airlock, an, exper an airlock only to be used for scientific experiments, not for human beings on spacewalks. Uh, they've installed it successfully to the Nauka module and are working on getting the electrical connections in. You can see that on your screen now, the set of six little knobs, and they're going to be installing those electrical connectors into it. FP-14-5 is mated. The first two cables on the Nauka side are now installed. Work continues to get all six installed. Should I help you access that area? No, it's fine. Looks like it's coming along. FFP 6 is mated. Not, not quite yet. Okay, copy. Standing by for confirmation. Okay. FFP 14 6 is mated. 
Copy. Thank you. Okay, I can continue. You take a break. Yeah, Dmitry, take a rest. Sergey will meet the remaining three connectors. And we'll need to video everything recorded on the Glisser camera. The entire setup, and then we begin translating back. Copy. This is HPP3. You need number one, right? Here is number one. Okay. Let me give it. Easy duration is six hours flat. Okay, copy. We are delaying a little bit. It's not critical. So let's finish mating these connectors and then translate toward the MRM. Okay, copy. Where is the ball? It's at about 90 degrees. Just orient yourself based on the parallel line. Okay. Work is about halfway done to install these cables onto the Nauka side. should attach myself better, stabilize myself. Okay, it's in. Almost in. No rotation. Okay, Sergey. Okay, it's moving. Okay, FP 14 1 is in place. Thank you. Now I am holding FP 14 2. Copy. Twisting it in. 
I'm done with 14.2. Okay, thank you. One less connector is left. Five out of the six electrical connectors have been installed onto the Nauka side. Last one. But don't say the final one. Well, it's the last one in this order. And cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev is wrapping up, installing the final cable onto the Nauka side. Are you holding me down? Yes. should attach it in place. Okay, attachment ring is in place. And FEP 14 yeah. 1 is in place. Happy. So let's take two minutes to shoot some video of the glisser. Use the glisser to get really close up images of all the labeling and all the connectors, then close the MLI blankets and begin translating towards the MRM. Okay, copy. And the electrical connections have been made. The MLI blankets fully, then at least close it as much as you can. Okay, copy. Earlier in the spacewalk, the experiment airlock was successfully captured and installed into the Nauka module. Uh, meanwhile, the cosmonauts Prokopiev and Patelin uh, worked on both sides, both the experiment airlock side and the Nauka side, to install a series of 12 electrical, electrical connectors, six on each side. They've just finished up work on that and are now going to do some closeout tasks here at this work site, including taking some videos and photos for Mission Control Moscow and cleaning up some thermal insulation if needed. Thank you for your assistance. Okay, now, regarding the glisser, I finished the video. Okay, thank you.
All the tethers are removed. They are back on the Krulak bag. The Krulak bag is closed. Yes, both of them. You are go then to transition and transfer towards the MRM. Okay, let's look at the MLI. If it is possible, because I'm not quite sure if it's possible. Yeah, exactly. So maybe from one edge of it you can tie it down somehow. Not even from one edge. Okay, then just leave it as is, Dmitry, and begin the translation. So I'm heading slowly in that direction, yes, and I'm following along right behind you. And you can see our spacewalkers in motion. Patel and Prokopiev have successfully installed those electric lines. They put some insulation over it so that their newly installed electrical lines have some protection against the environment of space. And now they're on the move. They're headed back now to the MRM-2, or Poisk. This is their airlock, the one that allows for spacewalking, uh, as they did today. You're going to see a lot of the steps that they did at the beginning of the spacewalk in reverse, uh, removing the protective cover 
and but they still need to jettison the bundle. You saw earlier in the spacewalk they got some supplies together as well as some supplies from previous spacewalks, some hardware that they don't want anymore. They're going to jettison that away from the space station before they enter Poisk. Can you help me out with it? Yes, just give me a sec. I say it's their airlock just because we are working so much today with the experiment airlock. The goal of today's spacewalk was to install it to the Nyaka module, but that experiment airlock is just that. It's four scientific experiments, and no human beings will go out of it. However, they're on their way to Poisk, which is the airlock designed for humans. Two gap spanners. Use them. One then the other. Okay. And then back. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about this jettison that they're going to perform. A jettison is when you throw an object away from the space station, essentially tossing it overboard. They'll position themselves to be able to throw the bundle retrograde from the Russian segment. It's away from the direction of travel of the space station. They do this so there is no chance it can re-contact the space station. On go from Mission Control, they'll release the bundle. Uh, here in Mission Control Houston, our topo console will be tracking the rate it's departing and its trajectory. Topo will also share that information with the U.S. Space Command so the bundle can be tracked. It is small and it is expected to burn up in the atmosphere pretty quickly. The bundle includes parts and coverings of the European robotic arm from a previous Russian spacewalk, the protective covers of the radiator's active and passive attachment interfaces from its relocation back on April 18th, and an insulation blanket and clamps from the experiment airlock from today. In total, it's, it'll be five objects from today's spacewalk, three objects from the first spacewalk in our series, and two pieces of hardware from even from spacewalks even earlier than that.
And that pole that you're seeing the cosmonauts go on to is called the Strela-1 boom. Strela meaning arrow in Russian. They're using Strela-1 to get to the Poisk module using a series of handholds to guide them on their way. Same for EV2. The attachment fixture has been removed. We are ready to translate. Okay, you are go. Am I passing through there? Yes, you are clear. I'm flying. Flying away. Okay, let's keep moving. We are parking. I'm tethering. The STO Strela translation ring is tethered. They're now once again in the vicinity of the Poisk module. Uh, here they're going to get some other items and put them into their jettison bundle. We have seven more minutes in shadow, so yes, let's restrain the stove and pick up the bundle for jettison. Wait for insulation before jettison. Okay, welcome. Trying to put the together. And who of you two will be doing the jettison? Most likely me. I will just tether myself on the post. Operator's post. Yes, you can jettison and I'll get some footage of it. So, yeah, let's get ready. Yes, in work. Mm -hmm. 
So you can take this. The cosmonauts are getting in position for the jettison. And there's a lot of wire ties here. Just got to make sure it doesn't snag on me. Okay, curlog bag, I'm holding it. And this goes here. You can see the jettison bundle on your screen now. These are unwanted items that they've used over the over three spacewalks now that they're going to jettison in the direction away from the direction that this base station is not traveling. There are a lot of cables here. They're working now to secure everything in the bundle. Yes, I've tied it down from one side and from the other side. It's quite a hefty bundle here. Yeah, it will be about five kilograms. Inaudible. Okay. Want to make sure we'll get to fly all the way down to Earth on pack. Okay, uh, ready?
now that the cosmonauts are in an orbital daytime, now they're getting ready for the jettison. Uh, can you uh, hook it to yourself? Yes. Yes, it's tethered to me, all this bundle. Uh, is it on my tether? No, it's on mine. I think we have... This jettison is the last task of the day for the cosmonauts. They're now six hours and 30 minutes into their spacewalk. Uh, please do the inspection. And, uh, should you need to use the towels, then we'll uh, just uh, tie these towels to the same bundle. Okay. It's right in front of me. Well, visually, no, I don't see any contaminations. Uh, check the check Dima's back. Check the helmet. Make sure your gloves are not contaminated. No, I cannot see any. Well, it's still not full sun, so uh, we do not see quite clearly. All right, let's um, let's wait for a moment because uh, we are six hours sixty one minutes into the EVA. And you guys did the hard work, so it's a good time to catch your breath for a minute. Let's wait for the full light. Now it looks like uh, his back is clean. Uh, his helmet. He doesn't need to wash his hair right now. All right, yeah, I think his head is clean. Yes. How does my head look? Looks fine. Okay, and... Yeah, it looks like we're both fine. Yes. You can see lighting conditions no. have improved. They're waiting for an orbital anything. sunrise before the jettison. Serious contamination. Copy. Okay, now. Watch. Yeah. Towards this way, yes. Let me set my foot right here, just one foot. Uh, could you turn your camera on, the one that's on your chest? You can see the bundle that they're going to jettison on your screen now. It's just a collection of bits from previous spacewalks, um, including this one, that are no longer needed and are going to be burned up in Earth's atmosphere harmlessly. Position yourself in the anchor area. And okay, your direction for jettison is 30 degrees pitch up, uh, 20 degrees to the right. Your and the velocity of jettison should be at least 8 meters per second. Okay. Yes. Uh, probably you'll be able to lower only one foot. Uh, yes. We don't see the horizon yet. Let us wait until we have a visual of the horizon. You don't need the horizon. We 
What country? Our velocity vector need to be re need to be referenced not to the horizon but to the station. Again, pitch up to the right. Okay, so in the motion direction, station motion direction. Okay. Let's, let's leave it here. And then we'll start jettisoning. Just a second. Let me straighten it all out. I suggest to aim test the jettison without removing the tethers, and after you'll do the test attempt of the jettison, then you'll remove all the tethers and will jettison it for good. Okay. Bring it up. And we're at a brief handover between our communication satellites. In the meantime, looking at views of Mission Control Moscow. Meanwhile, here in Mission Control Houston, we're all getting ready for the jettison. The Topo console position is keenly watching this operation as he will be the one uh, tracking the objects and relaying this information to the U.S. Space Command. So let's aim. Uh, uh, if you could, uh, guys, can you cut me? Yes. Okay, let's aim. We drop out. And we lost video for the moment. So please wait for our go. Copy, yes, we're just aiming for now. Copy, thank you. Mission Control Moscow relaying to the crew that it, that we don't want them to let go of that jettison bundle while we're at this momentary loss of video. But now that it's back, they're going to get ready to release it. These are some of the last views we'll see of this hardware. Now the video is back. And on your readiness, we can start. Okay, let's release it. Okay, I'm ready. I removed the hook. 
The bundle is secured in the jettison configuration. All right, let's uh, wait on comments. So are you giving us a go? Yes, you are go, Artem. If you are sure at, uh, about the direction of jettison, then yes. All right. Let's and there it goes. Excellent. All right, bye bye. Just flies beautifully. And we are monitoring. That would be a new star. Yeah, it's actually quite shiny. We see uh, the path. It bypasses the station. Excellent initial velocity and catches up with the speed. Perfect. And our topo console here in Mission Control confirms that it was a good jettison. As long as we don't want to miss the Earth, we're fine. All right, guys. Then you are go to start translation to the hitch. So the jettison is now complete and the bundle is released, facing away from the direction of okay. travel with the International Space Station. Mission Control working with the crew to ensure that they had just the right angle to ensure that that bundle will not recontact the space station. The bundle included five objects from today's spacewalk, including the insulation blanket on the end of the experiment airlock. That end is now installed to Nauka and no longer needs a cover. It also includes three objects from Patelan and Prokopiev's previous spacewalk back in April and two pieces of hardware from an even earlier spacewalk. The bundle is about 11 pounds total and will harmlessly burn up in Earth's atmosphere soon after. Okay. You can We're getting our final views of that bundle now. Moscow Station is Joan. Andre, I understand that you are done with the deactivation of this station. Phase two, yes. Yes, everything has been completed. Excellent. The guys are coming back. Yeah, so you are go to perform all the steps uh, in preparation for greeting them back on board the station. Okay, copy. And please report on each hatch closure. Okay. getting our last views of this jettison bundle as it moves away from the International Space Station. In the meantime, Prokopiev and Patelin have concluded their spacewalk. Uh, that was their final task. Uh, now they're going to work on getting back inside the International Space Station by ingressing or getting back inside of the hatch. They've got a couple of tasks, like um, removing the protective ring that they had installed uh, when they first started their spacewalk, uh, turning off their helmet cameras and doing some buddy checks um, for their spacesuits before they can officially close the hatch for the end of our spacewalk. Uh, there were towels tied up here. Oh, okay, I forgot.
Position yourselves next to the EV hatch, and then we'll do the inventory of your tools. All right. All right, I received the mess. Copy. It's, uh, you know, uh, this message about your shoulder of time, but that's okay. It was the same as the last time. Dmitry, you will show up very soon. No, we'll manage. We have time. Okay. Uh, let's uh, do the inventory, and do you see your tool, Katie? Okay. Well, the Katie itself. You have cutter, hammer, screwdriver, and the pry bar on the exterior. Cutter, hammer inside, screwdriver inside, from pry bars here. And then the head uh, pouch. Yes, the head pouch. Clamps, spatula. And your um, backup tether that's in the pouch, but you didn't use it. Yes, correct. Yeah, and actually, we never used spatula this time. All right, well, done with tool kitty. Yes, everything is in the pouch, everything's fine, in place. All right. Some of the tools are tied together. What was what was tied together? 
Our Kruluk bags, one and two. They're tied together. Exactly. And Kruluk bag number one. We have a cutter. Uh, by the way, all we took all caps. Actually, we're carrying it with us. Copy. Copy. Okay, we will stow them for disposal, but inside. Okay. Yeah. Because it would have been too much to secure all of them outside. Okay. All right. Can you hand me the crew look back, please? In a minute. Thank you. Uh, closer, because it's already secured. Okay, I'm ready. We have the tethers that were removed from the jettison bundle. bundle. Yes. Two. Then in the first crewlock bag, we have cutter. Uh, two for demating the connectors. Cut here. The demating tool is here. Uh, needle nose pliers here. Cape keeper and needle nose pliers are here. Now for look back number two. We should be three era tools. Speaking simultaneously. And the cleaning tool, serial number 1002, yes, confirmed. We are done with the bundles. All right, let's talk what's attached to you. Okay, Sergey, let's start with your suit. Unintelligible. I'm checking. Toolkit is here. Cutter, no, not cutter. The ratchet is here. And the wing. Uh, no. While we work to get our live views back uh, momentarily, the work continues to get those spacewalkers back into the hatch. They're configuring their spacesuits now, making sure that it's in the proper configuration for ingress or getting back into the poised airlock. Uh, two were used, two were like backup, okay. One uh, large small hooks and one retractable. Large small retractable on the next Yes, both here. <laughs> All right, now the cartridge uh, limit message. Uh, five minute countdown started. All right, let's uh, check the trash bag is uh, with you, yes? All right, trash bag and tool kit, all here. What about keeper? Glazer is here. Ratchet. Ratchet in uh, tool carry, copy. Two small red, small, small. One for the camera, the other on the ratchet, and one is free. An inventory check is underway now. So one large small and one adjustable red, right? Correct. Affirmative. Hold in place. Okay, thank you. The inventory is complete. You, everything is in place. You didn't forget anything. Okay, we did the visual inspection of the suit. After that, we did not go far. So you are go to ingress. 
Sergei is to ingress first. Copy. Prokopiev is now on his way inside the Poisk airlock at the go for mission control. What about the dryer? Well, we'll turn it off after you both ingress. Okay, copy. Let me take a look at your back. Okay. Did I get some tan? Nope. I'm kind of melting on the sun. All right, I'm secured from the inside. Good. Uh, give me that hook. Copy of now going into the Poisk airlock. Okay. Patel and will follow him shortly. All right, Demon now uh, sec secured that now he will release the short tether. Uh, okay, thank you. I pushed it. Uh, all right. Two, uh, EV2 is in. Okay, Sergey, thank you. And you are go to turn off hackers. Turning off. My hacker is off. Copy. Copy. And the seal user also off. They continue to work to get their spacesuits into the proper configuration. This includes turning off their high-definition helmet cameras and their spacesuit lights. Okay, now if it is also inside the airlock. All right, Dima, turn off your hiccups. And then both turn the uh, sublimator drying on. In other words, turn the sublimators off and start drying, okay? My hacker is off. No seal use. Okay, seal use are also off. Okay, now sublimator. I'm going to close it. Copy and concur. Приступайте к снятию защитного кольца. You may remove the protective ring. Protective ring. Слушай, он блестит, там замечательно. До сих пор видно точку. I can still see the bundle. I think still flapping away there. 
Both spacewalkers are inside the Poisk airlock. Let me put it this way. Both Patelin and Prokopiev inside the Poisk airlock uh, where their day began, going over some last minute check marks to make sure that they have everything in place before the end of the spacewalk. When the hatch is closed, that will signify the end of this spacewalk. Did you call? Yes. How do you read me, Moscow, on space to ground two? We read you loud and clear. We're standing by. Dimitri on space to ground true. Sergey, Dmitry, how do you copy me? 
We hear you loud and clear. I was just working with the protective ring. Copy, did you get a chance to take a look? Take a look at the hatch. We are stepping into that right now. Uh, the surfaces are clean. You can no longer see our spacewalkers. They are no longer on the screen because they are inside that Poisk airlock, getting ready to close the hatch to signify the end of their spacewalk. They're doing some closeout tasks at the moment, like doing a visual inspection of the hatch. The mating surfaces. We've inspected the mating surface. There is no FOD. Happy. Then you can loosen the tether, take the adjustable tether from the panel, but do not close the hatch yet. Okay, copy. Okay, copy. Adding slack to the tether. Okay, tether has been slacked. I have disconnected the tether. The hatch is closed. Do not close the hatch yet. You can close, but leave a small crack open. Okay, copy. It's still open, actually. Sergey and Dmitry, you can deactivate ISTR. Okay, copy. Deactivating ISTR in the middle position. ISTR in the OTCOL or OFF OFF position on suit one. Copy. On both, it is OFF. And for the counter on the right, what is your situation with a dryer? Uh, 25 inaudible, and actually mine doesn't show anything. Okay, the old drying norm, mine doesn't show anything, it says the main pressure, battery voltage, and the cartridge. Well, we know the time of the deactivation, so we'll tell you about the final time. Okay, I'm looking at the main display. No, I did see the illumination of the drying. 
Okay, uh, drying is normal for both suits. You can proceed to closing the hatch. Copy. Proceeding to closing the hatch. Closing and latching. It's kind of dark here. Yeah, that makes sense that it's dark. Well, you can turn on the Orlan lights if you need to. No, I just need to lower the fil the light filter. Okay, the hatch is closed but not latched. The lock is in the operating position. And rotating it to the closed position, I see the rollers in the grooves. The EV hatch is closed. Copy. Guys, I want to thank you for your hard work today. You did an excellent job. You performed all of the tasks. Based on my calculations, EV duration is 7 hours, 10 minutes, 28 seconds. Thank you for both of you. I pass you back to Dmitry for repress. I want you to... And the hatch is now closed of the Poisk airlock, signifying the end of today's spacewalk. It concluded at 10.10 10 p.m. Central Time, 11.10 p.m. Eastern, for a total spacewalk duration of 7 hours and 10 minutes. Before celebrating our challenge the EVA. Well, no, no, I congratulate you more because you did have more work to do than me. You did a great job. And next EVA will be feathering the radiator. Now we've just completed all the work with MRM-1. So I'm passing the baton over back to Dimitri for repress, and I'll talk to you soon. Yes, thank you. Congratulations again, and talk to you soon. Sergey, Dmitry. Please prepare the cue cards when you're ready to work per cue card 10, step 4, to perform the repress. Please let me know. The backup airlock chamber is set up, and so you are going to proceed when you are ready. Okay, copy. So, cue card 10, right? That's correct. Cue card 10. After hearing the official word from Mission Control Moscow, it looks like our spacewalk concluded at 10.11 p.m. Central Time, 11.11 p.m. Eastern Time, for a total spacewalk duration of 7 hours, 11 minutes. Operator portion, we skip cue card 9. Today's spacewalk began at 3 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern, to mark the official start time of the spacewalk. Prokopiev and Patelin then made their way to the Rosviet module, where they unplugged a series of electrical lines, removed its protective blanket, and opened three launch locks, ultimately releasing the airlock from Rosviet. And the backup 
Then Andrei Fedyaev inside the space station moved the airlock over to the Nauka module, and Prokopiev and Patelin did some closeout tasks at Rosviet, including removing some airlock tie rods, closed some insulation flaps, and got their hardware their hardware ready to jettison. The spacewalkers then moved over to Nauka to greet the airlock as it arrived. They ran into some trouble aligning the airlock flush with Nauka, but with the help of the spacewalkers, it was successfully captured and installed after its launch nearly 13 years ago. Even though the airlock was installed, uh, it still needed some power. The spacewalkers worked to install six electrical lines that connected the airlock to Nauka. They've now concluded their spacewalk at 10.11 p.m. and are both inside the Poisk airlock with the, with the hatch closed, signifying the end of their spacewalk that lasted 7 hours 11 minutes in duration. Repressurization should be underway soon. Repressurization has begun. Pressure is 70. Oh, 03. Copy. Pressure is 100. One hundred One hundred eighty. Audible. 210. Standing by until we reach 260. Today's spacewalk is the 
60-second spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. It was the fifth out of the space station this year, the third spacewalk for Expedition 69. This was Prokopiev's fifth spacewalk, earning him a total of 37 hours, zero minutes of spacewalking time total in his career. This was Patelin's third spacewalk, giving him a total of 21 hours, 31 minutes in his career. And the 262 spacewalks have now totaled 1,666 hours, 35 minutes, which is the equivalent of 69 days, 10 hours, and 35 minutes of spacewalking time. The three spacewalks of Expedition 69 have equaled 22 hours and 7 minutes. And please, Andrei, monitor, monitor the pressure also for the duration of the stabilization. Okay. Sergey, while we're stabilizing, let's go to cue card 11, step 5, transition to onboard power supply. Okay, copy. Pressure is 297. Okay, Andrei, copy. Transition to onboard power supply, monitoring that the total pressure in the tanks is greater than 150. The PSS, PSS transitioning, inaudible, okay, yes, it is open. Attaching the fluid umbilical. Activating the tow heat exchanger. And then the power. And then we will be working with MRM2, activating the tow heat exchanger mode. Today's spacewalk was the second in a series of three spacewalks. In April, Pokopiev and Patelin moved a radiator to the Nauka module, and today the duo moved an airlock from the Rosvia module to Naoka for future use by scientific experiments so that they can be exposed to the vacuum of space. The outfitting of Nauka continues on May 12th when Prokopiev and Patelin go out once again to get that radiator from the first spacewalk online. Today's spacewalk was complete at 10.11 p.m., totaling 7 hours and 11 minutes. Repressurization is underway and going well. We won't be on the air, but repressurization will continue, and they'll move on to remove their Orlon spacesuits and conclude their day. This concludes our coverage for Mission Control Houston. Thanks for joining us.
I'm uh, Bradley Tyree, and I'm a NASA test operations engineer here at the A1 Fred Hayes test stand. From a really young age, I was interested in space, and I can remember being in elementary school and doing like the solar system science projects and things like that. Um, also, my great grandfather worked out here for Rocketdyne and Rockwell and Boeing uh, as they changed names throughout the years from the 60s, 70s, and even into the early 80s. So he had a direct part. Uh, a direct part that he played with the space shuttle main engine program. I have pictures of him working on the engine and working at B2, you know, back when it was more just like a skeleton. Um, and so that's really interesting. And, and that was really fun, you know, growing up, hearing all these stories and seeing the pictures of him working on the old rocket engines and things like that. So I never thought I would see myself at Stennis Space Center, but as I came up and I started going to college and studying aerospace engineering, I realized, wow, I, I could really do, I could follow in his footsteps, you know, and, and do the same kind of work. Um, never pictured myself doing that, but so I've always been interested in it. And that's how I guess I found myself here. As a NASA test operations engineer, one of the roles that we have to perform is the role of the test conductor. And the test conductor is the vessel at which all of the operations on the stand has to be coordinated through for testing the rocket engine. So as a test conductor, this was never something that I saw myself doing whenever I first started at Stennis Space Center. I kind of remember sitting in the back of the room and thinking, wow, that person up there is important. <laughs> um, so as the test conductor, you're responsible for dozens and dozens of different technicians and engineers operations. They are all counting on you to know what's happening on the stand at all times. You're, you're responsible for knowing the valve positions from level one to level 10 and what systems are pressurized and what systems aren't. And, people are looking to you to tell them when and where they can perform their job. And so there's a lot of responsibility and there's a lot of pressure on the test conductor. You know, sometimes you're having f five or six conversations at one time with five or six different people simultaneously. So it can be stressful, but it's also very exciting. On a typical test day, the test team arrives at the control center around 5 a.m. So we start preparing the facility for calibration, right? We have to make sure everything is reading accurately and precisely because we're gonna be reading all of this data back and conveying it and sending it out and processing it. We have a lot of analysis that happens. Um, so the team arrives and we, everybody starts getting on station. We have transfer engineers for the different propellants that goes to the rocket engine. We have data engineers, video engineers, you know, technicians start getting on station on the test stand. We start, everybody gets, starts falling into place. That's all day long, 12 plus hours, right? You're, on, you're in the chair and you're coordinating all these different activities and you have all these different conversations happening. You have all these systems you have to monitor and data you have to watch. All these things are happening and test day is this just dr giant adrenaline rush, right? So you're building up and, and you've got all these operations and then, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock happens and here it comes. You're getting ready to hit that button to start that engine. That's, it's like being at the top of the roller coaster, right? You're, you're right there at the peak and you're ready to hit the button. You hit the button and that rocket engine starts firing. Now you're on the roller coaster and you're just holding on, right? You're watching all these different data systems. You're watching temperatures and pressures and, and all of these things are happening, you know, in that 500 seconds. One of the more important things about being a test conductor is how the team is integrated into that role, right? So the test conductor's job can be much easier if we've got a really knowledgeable, trained, test team, right? And so everybody can take their specific individual systems and relay that information to the test conductor. And the test goes smoothly when you're getting lots of thumbs up from the test team, right? It, it helps to have a team that's on their game all the time. Today, we'll be testing the RS-25 engine, which is used to power the space launch system on the Artemis missions. Um, these RS-25 engines are space shuttle main engines that have gotten new upgraded parts. We've used things like 3D printing. We've got different manufacturing um, techniques. And so we're testing these engines as part of a certification series right now. And uh, this series will prove and provide data useful for future Artemis missions and future rocket engines. Here at NASA, we talk about testing like you fly. And a typical RS-25 test runs for about 500 seconds because 500 seconds is about how long it takes for the space launch system from the ground to reach orbit. So you might think, you know, why is this test going so long sometimes? And, and that's because we're testing like we fly. You know, we want to make sure that we hit all of the same parameters that we would need to hit in a launch day situation. 
During today's engine test, you'll notice the rocket engine gimbal, or in other words, it'll pivot around a central point, right? This gimbling is used during flight.